from Corolla One Studios in Glendale, California, this is The Adam Corolla Show. Adam's guest today, Alon Gold and Violet Benson, plus luxury real estate agent Aaron Kerman, and some news stories with Chris Loxamana and a spirited round of Blah Blah Blog. And now, wondering what Aaron would do with a house with a dirt lawn and two front doors. Adam Carolla. Yeah, get it on. Got to get on a church. We got our mandate. Get it on. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for telling a friend. We love that about you. Elon Gold is here. Violet may, Benson is May back. I, Bump may I back. introduce myself as Johnny Carson would have introduced me in the old days? Yes. Uh, okay, I'm glad you're all in a good mood tonight. We got a <clears throat> we got a funny young man. He's from the Bronx, New York. He's making his network television debut with us. Uh, would you please welcome Mr. Elan Gold? He would get my name wrong <laughs> mm -hmm. in the end, but so I just introduced myself. Nice, Violet. Have do you know who Johnny Carson is, and do you know the <laughs> who band Elan Gold is? Do you know the band? Well, that's that's an easy one. Do you know the band Genesis? <laughs> no. Uh, Wait, to, to neither. It's a both. No, 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 no. You know Genesis, Phil Collins. Uh, don't help. throwing it all the way. Don't throwing, help. No. Okay, Johnny okay. Carson, who hosts... Who Johnny hosts? Carson sounds really familiar. No, actually, no, I don't. Johnny Carson hosts... <laughs> okay, <laughs> don't wait, wait, wait. Let's go. What? We got to Let's gotta not guess. go back that far. Let's not go to, like, you know, Jack Parr. Let's go, do you know, do you know Jay Leno? Yeah, oh, I know that guy. Oh, this is good. You hear about this? Because <laughs> of the chin. See, no, it's no, oh, the chin. chin. Yeah. <laughs> Jay would be so happy to hear that. <laughs> it's not the jokes. It's my face that she remembered, my lower face. <laughs> the part that wasn't burnt off. Oh, my God. All right, so is you... he in a fire? Yeah. Yeah. Oh. yeah. Mm -hmm. I think I... Okay. He's okay now, though. He's okay. I, oh, I thank think God. I, I, think I, did I can this sleep joke at night. Okay, thank I God. did this joke last time, but it's worth repeating. You know, I was never at Burning Man, but I was a Burning Man, <laughs> folks. <laughs> oh, this is good. So before Jay Leno, mm -hmm. there was a guy named Johnny Carson. Uh, he was the king of late night. He did it for about 30 years, and he had a little twitch. And uh, everything he said is, is, is that weird? He would say something and then say, is that, is that weird? Is that wild stuff? Anyway, So no it. Johnny Carson, Violet. Maybe I I don't know I mean I'm I'm more of a face person nice. not really a name person nice right so you She's would have living, to by the way in the era just saying more of a face person oh that yeah. guy yeah, yeah so that's I don't know. you I you don't would know have him. to <laughs> you would you would have to go to Mount Rushmore to identify the guys that were on it you couldn't just do it. Is, right. that, is that guy right. still around? <laughs> that guy is not still around. He, he okay. was a he was a big smoker, and he died of uh, emphysema. Yes, but <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'll tell you one thing: Johnny missed out yeah. on. He would have loved pickleball. Oh, he would have my loved it. God, he would have still loved... be alive if pickleball came into vogue 100%. before he died. That yeah. would have kept him going for another twenty years because all he did was smoke out on the colonies in the Malibu. He'd sit. By the way, his home in the colonies in Malibu, speaking of real estate, I mean, oh. he must have bought that home in 1973 oh. for $1. the princely sum of like, it was probably like $300,000 or something. That thing is like $47 million. Yeah. But wow. he would sit, play the drums, smoke, and then he would go out to his tennis court and hit hit the ball around, but if, but if he had pickleball, no doubt he would still be here. That's what they're all doing. Larry yeah. David does it every Sunday. They're all, all the kids are doing uh, the pickleballs. Oh, now. that's Johnny's home in the uh, colonies. Now there it is. It, I wonder was... what that thing's valued at. Ben, you got to figure out like when he bought Jeez. that and what it is today. But I guarantee forties. He bought it at forty million of dollars. Yeah. That's like he yeah. could be at a Google million. campus. All right, let's go over Genesis and Phil Collins songs with Violet now. Oh, she God. Would, okay. I think do you, she'd do you know Phil Collins. Collins? No. Man, she would recognize a song. Or two. Let's well, show. Okay, to my defense, I'm also not from America. Yeah, that's true. So she's there's right. a lot of things you I don't. Know, she's right. a Russian. Like she don't. And Lon, you've never heard of ABBA, right? No. <laughs> Why? In my defense, you're not from Sweden. Right? <laughs> well, I know ABBA. Oh, you do? Yeah. Okay. They were popular in my country. Okay. Who well, I guess my dad acts? was a fan of them. Um, I, ABBA, Michael Jackson, then obviously. Uh, Britney Spears and Christina yeah. <laughs> Aguilera. By the way, you know yeah. ABBA, but you don't know ABBA Cab. No. Okay. Why have we spent the first four minutes attacking this poor young Russian What's woman? Well, we're getting to know. I mean, here's the thing. She's from Russia. She's younger than us by like a mile and a half. Yeah. She shouldn't know things that we know. 
I'm just it's curious. Not an I, I can test. switch to a totally inert subject that I feel like we could all okay, go dive ahead. in okay. on because uh, no, we're not picking on you. We're oh, no. I genuinely we're to would not you. care. Yeah, I oh, had, she's a strong woman. I just had she's a, Russian. <laughs> you know, my wife is Russian, by the way. Mm-hmm. You know what her maiden name is? Pravda. Catherine, okay, yeah, Pravda. so close. Pravda. She's real. Pravda. She 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 was like is third, she Jewish? Yeah, she's third generation American. She's not like hello. It's not like one of those like hello are you? It's not that. Yeah, like mm. you couldn't tell she was Russian. She doesn't still have the chest hair. Mm. Mm. What? Russians have chest hair? I'm joking. It's a joke. I was, um, doing, I was being funny. <laughs> her middle anyway, name was, is Truth. Her her maiden name is Truth. Yeah, Pravda it means Truth. Yeah, it's a common Russian. I I met name. her. Yeah, we we yeah we had oh. a three way. <laughs> oh no, you just met her. That's right, we just oh. met. But anyway, I was, uh, my, yeah, my... I only like women with chest hair. So that's no, 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 why. no. The truth. It's just a silly joke about Russian women. I love Russian women because I married one. But uh, here's what I noticed. Here's a new bit that I've been doing about mm-hmm. the Russian language. Mm-hmm. Right? Always. I know. Adam just says this is more of a conversation. You're not doing panel on on the old Carson show. But the Russian. Uh, language they sound like it sounds like the noise you make when you're trying to swat a fly it's like (laughs) 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 Uh, all right later on in the show i'll do my new impression of uh, zelensky oh yeah i'm looking forward to that let's talk i'll go ahead i'll be sean penn all right uh (laughs) penn but provide the year that he bought the house please because that was so much 1984 so much apart johnny carson this unknown comedic act <laughs> who had a short-lived career. <laughs> he bought this house in 1984 for $9.5 million. I don't oh, believe that. Now, that's not the 70s. That seems too high for that's 84, too high Ben. For you gotta, you're going to have to recheck high. that. Yeah. But his uh, estate sold it in um, 05 for forty six million in cash. Then now it's seventy or whatever. Yeah, you could ask you, Aaron when he comes in. Oh five seems too early. Uh, ben, these numbers seem seem weird, but oh five forty six seems like too much. Nine point five and eighty four feels like way too much. But either way, you can keep your dive into it. All right, I have a uh, other. We can, how was how was the ice house last night? The ice house. I I, I I had a I had a breakthrough a comedic. Breakthrough and That's awakening big, after all these years. After all these years, yeah. Uh, I put on a show at the Ice House uh, last night. Um, I'll I'll get into the lineup in a second. But if you didn't kill, you're terrible because it's the, notoriously the easiest room in the country. Yes. So it, the Ice House. So here's here's what happened to me with the with the Ice House. The Ice House is in Pasadena. Uh, one of the Bus family members of uh, Jerry Bus bought it, the the son, um, I'll think of his name in a second, very nice gentleman, met him. Uh, the place was always kind of a dive, like it's very old and it had a kind of look like, you know, you go into the, one of those restaurants that was decorated in 1973, like the old spaghetti factory or something, it's just a bunch of dark walnut wood everywhere and everything's kind of dark and weird and, and that's how it was, it, it didn't really feel like a comedy club it kind of felt like an old time restaurant or something and and there it was but it was it was great for me because i live in la cañada california if you live in la cañada there there are no comedy clubs to get to there's the improv there's a comedy store there's the laugh factor they're all basically the same place and they're all as far away from la cañada as you can get and so i was uh, tasked with the chore of doing stand-up but i would come here podcast all day then i'd drive back to la cañada and then at eight at night i'd have to leave and spend an hour driving to the comedy store you know do 15 minutes get back in the car drive for another hour back but the but the ice house is in pasadena and i could get there in eight minutes from my house so i said this is the place i'm going to (laughs) and i went there a few times then covid kicked in then they closed it and then that was that and I was left with no local club. It took them a long time to rebuild it. They rebuilt it. It's spectacular, state of the art. It, it looks amazing. Yeah, it's totally and easy. John Bus. And is it John Bus? Yeah. And, and to speak to the crowd. Yeah. Um, 
So I, I put on a show there last night. Jamie Kennedy was there. Kyle Dunnigan was there. Oh, wow. Daryl Hammond was there. It's a great lineup. Yeah. And 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 I was just going to go last. And and everyone was crushing it. So then I had this thing. Elon, you probably run into this where you put on these shows on a on a week night. You're going to do 15, maybe 18 minutes. And you think to yourself, I, I should really use this time to work on some material. I'm going to work on some new material. I'm going to work it out over here because because that's what that's what this night is for. This night Just is don't a, open with it. Yeah. So <laughs> I'm sitting there in the green room, but now what you do is you hear everyone crushing and, yeah. before you. Yeah. And you're like, I can't do my new shit. And they're all <laughs> doing yeah. their sh- good shit yeah. because they're they don't care. And the guy before them crushed. Yeah. So they had a thought about working out some new shit. And yes. they're like, fuck it, I'm going with the old shit. Correct. Because the dude in front of me just crushed. And I'm not going to come in here with a notepad and work things out Correct. when that dude crushed. Now there's momentum. Right. So yeah. I'm sitting there. And, and it's more than momentum. It's pressure to match the kill. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So I'm sitting there in the green room and I thought, let's not fall into this trap just because the guys in front of you are crushing and you're going last and it's your show you still need to work out some new shit so i put a list together of just new shit (laughs) a bunch of new shit some shit i've said a time or two but never really worked out and then some shit's never been uttered on stage by me and i went on and i just said i'm gonna go up there I'm starting with something new. No. If it works, no. I'm going to keep going. Why would you oh, do no. that? It's crazy. <laughs> Jerry, <laughs> you no, of you all don't people. You start with new stuff. You start with the old stuff and you go, you get into the new. But Jerry, you know how important it is for a comedic to work out material. I do, but this is crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe after the killing, 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 you said, let me open with the stuff that will probably tank. Yes. That's balls, though. But... I go up there, yeah. I start with a brand new thing, and it kills. Damn it. Yes. So then I go, uh, fuck it, I'm going to the next thing. Uh, On It's just a buck slip. It's just a list of brand new jokes. There's probably 11 of them on there. Mm. Just premises. Next one, kills. Ugh. Next one, kills. I hate you. <laughs> now it's all new. It's all killing. It's, to speak to your point, it's the greatest crowd ever. You couldn't pull that shit off at the improv on a Wednesday night. They would not go for that. They're laughing at everything. And at some point, I'm supposed to be doing 17 minutes. Uh, I don't have my phone or watch or anything. At some point, it's struck me that I went through about 10 new premises, and there's still no light. They're, they're supposed to light you at 15, and then you got two minutes to wrap it up. I have no idea what time it is because it's all new material. So Elon knows you can kind of time your act out because you know your bits and you know, okay, there's like six things and then I'll end with the uh, airline food bit. But and until, that, you, until you see the light, you don't know what time it is. <laughs> like, you, but you, you, you can you feel gauge. It. You, you can, feel, aren't I done? You can gauge <laughs> yeah. it by your act. Yeah. But everything I did was new and I'd never done it before. So, so you don't know how long I have that is. no fucking idea <laughs> what time minutes, it is. Been 15. And I keep looking for the light and the light just never shows up. <laughs> and at, at the half hour mark oh wow i'm i literally just stop and i like say to someone in the audience what time is it because <laughs> i know i hit the stage at yeah. about 9 15 but i don't know what time it is because it's all new material i have no gauge and yeah. there is no light i don't fucking know what they did with the light and he's like it's uh 9 45 and i'm like i've been up here for a half hour which is fine and, and here's my whole thing in life you know the, I, I get off the stage i'm like where's the light and they go hey you were killing it out there we figured we'd just <laughs> let you go it's like all right but if you're not going to do the light then say it yeah because i'm looking for it and i think i'm on minute 13 when i'm minute 37 <laughs> yeah is that that's not a thing right like they they'll just like oh he's doing really good let's hold off on the light and let that him go that happens every it now and then especially if oh, you're headlining it's your show I- right I did a show before last year, and it was my show. At the improv, right? Yeah. You do stand-up? I recently started, yeah. Awesome. But I did my own show, but it was for my podcast, and then I decided to just do stand-up. So I wrote half of myself the night before, and then some of that morning, which my man, when my agents found out, they're like, what the fuck? Why would you do that? Because so, I wasn't aware. But anyway, I wasn't aware of the light, 
and I'm so fucking stupid that I accidentally went over by an hour. I did a two <laughs> hour show I've... by just talking and not stopping and literally got to the point that pe- this person had to walk up to this, towards the stage to go <laughs> like this because I just kept going. And because I, no one told me that when the light flicks off, it means that you have to finish. I, I thought I was just seeing stars because I was getting too much like stage anxiety. So that happened to me. But it was all like my fans. So it was different. Like no one was going to tell me to, to stop. When you Except said when you told that story, and I have a couple of questions about that story, but the first sorry, thing, I didn't mean to interrupt your story. No, not at all. Will you finish? We'll get back. Oh, we're yeah. getting back. It's all Adam. I'm it's always all done, Adam. and I'm always okay. beginning. <laughs> so there is no here. end here. I'm a circle of conversation. <laughs> you said you, it, when you said, and I'm sorry that my mind went here, but when you said, and I get the light, and then I, and then I have to be finished. I wonder if there's like a light in porn where like they get the light, and it's like, mm-hmm. oh, we, we have to be finished. We have, yeah. we have to finish now. Yeah, like I, a light I, for porn. The, the problem, do they get the light? Uh, pr- probably <laughs> not. No, no. I think they get a bump in the back of the sack with the boom mic. <laughs> Th- that's and porn that tradition. Out. Just one tap, and then boom, means it's time. It's, it's time. Just a little, a it's little nut tap. Money, right. It's nothing violent. The boom mic's heavily padded. Right. It's not dangerous. So for the record, there's no light. No light. They don't there's get the a light. boom mic the boom back mic sack tap, the which light. means lunch is here. Let's bring it home. <laughs> Do you know that I'm working on a new uh, musical? It's called Porn the Musical. I think I'm gonna lick it here. <laughs> anyway, that's right. Porn the Musical. If I were a tit man, I'd... <laughs> 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 like <a> motorboat. <laughs> yeah. All day long, I... <laughs> 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 and all that jizz. Anyway, that's Porn the Musical. That's good. Thank you. I'm working on that. We're, you have we're any... investors. Uh, you have any Genesis songs you could do porn to? Yeah, it's funny. By the way, Throwing It All Away is one of the best songs ever. I love that song. It's just so good in 2D. I mean, they're all good. No, they, Phil Collins has some bad songs, but... Yeah, of course, but... He- Remember Casey Kasem? Oh, yes. <laughs> oh, piss off. Oh, Obviously, no, I don't. She the thing about Casey everything. is he did American Top 40, Radio Plays them, Record Store, Sell them, Billboard Ranks them, and AT40 Counts them Down. <laughs> Here's a little ditty by a guy named Diddy. No, I hear. Oh. Ryan Seacrest did the America's Top 40 countdown of the best uh, pop songs of the week, and he would, you know, he would say, and he had Casey had a high voice and a low one. <laughs> he, he would say his first name up, Casey Kasem. And he, he, <laughs> Leno has that. You know, Leno's down here. You know, he's up there. You know, and, go up there, and it's like this, and it's like this. So Casey did this. He was like the most famous thing on the radio. You never even heard. All right, listen. I wish I was as Russia. high as you. What? I, <laughs> wait a second man, now. Wait a second. Now, wait a second you, now. I would have as many jokes too. I may have popped a five milligram before mm-hmm. this just to yeah. perfect my impressions. She was, called a lawn out right before the yeah, mic. She goes, up. "Are you high?" I go, "I mean, maybe I popped something." <laughs> I was just. I was at the comedy store talking to Jay Farrow, who's a great impressionist comedian. He was on SNL, and he 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 got stoned. He goes, "I'm about to go on." I go, "Why do you get stoned before a set?" And he said, "Your impressions." I go, oh my God, I just discovered that because I'm not a stoner guy. I just started doing a little sure. thing. No, I swear, it's, uh, till I was 50. Mm. Mm-hmm. I, I swear, like I didn't drink till my 30s. I didn't do, do anything. Yeah, I swear. I, I'm like, just, I'm high on life, girlfriend. But Except anyway, today. Yeah, this morning I'm yeah. taken. Anyway, so, so he said, when you do a little edible, even five or 10, whatever, it crystallizes the your vo- like your impressions come out. I don't know if it's no inhibition or whatever, but my impressions are more perfect when I am you know slightly uh, edited. I, yeah, I need to do that. I'm like the same. I like I drive so much better on like three beers. Really, <laughs> driving is <laughs> a different. No, I'm just. I know a lot of that kids listen to the, the show and I'm just trying to pre- pass pass a message along. Back right, to the hold show. On, hold on. I, I'm hold on. Adderall. Go ahead. Hold on. Uh, ben, did you find anything about the, those houses, or we, we, um, we done yeah. with that one? All right. <laughs> Can uh, I get back to? But the sh- hold on. Yeah. Hold on. The other thing is, is of course, um, of course, Casey is most 
Casey Kasem is uh, most famous for his meltdown oh. over over Two, dog stories. I got to do some goddamn dead dog dedication. <laughs> For fuck's sake, is Don on the phone? Well, I don't know this story. Oh, please oh, play you it up. This song. Oh. Okay, so imagine the most mild mannered guy, and everything is a long distance dedication. And at number eight, it's and he was just always happy go lucky. And then there was this lost tape <laughs> or found tape where he goes nuts on the staff, and as he's reading his his copy. He starts cursing. You never heard Casey Kasem curse. He starts yelling at everyone. He's like, I got to read these goddamn death dedications and then go into an up-tempo ballad. This fucking mother is Don on the phone. Please play. Can we please Everyone's play? Everyone's agent was named Don in 1979. Don Buckwald. Don. It's Don yeah. something. Yeah. It's Every Don agent. On the phone. You would name your kid Don in the 60s just so, so it could work. Be, he'll be an agent someday. He won't be in front Don, of the camera, you, yeah. but he will be managing. Now, listen to this. So just imagine. Imagine this mild-mannered, sweet guy who... Uh, do we have it? Watch this. Caught on... The countdown will begin this Sunday afternoon at 1, right here on the radio station you grew up with. Music Radio 138. Oh, fuck. What the hell's going on here? Oh, geez, well, isn't it the last hour? We got another hour to do? Geez, I thought we were almost finished. Good golly, Miss Molly. Boy, this is fucking ponderous, man. Ponderous, fucking ponderous. Hi, this is Casey Kasem. American Top 40 has moved to a new time. I hope you'll join me this Saturday morning and every Saturday morning at 2. 2. Now. Okay, hold on. I got dead That's dog. That's not the dead there, here dog. Here goes dead now. dog. It's coming. <clears throat> now, we're up to our long distance dedication. And this one is about kids and pets and a situation that we can all understand, whether we have kids or pets or neither. It's from a man in Cincinnati, Ohio. And here's what he writes. Dear Casey, this may seem to be a strange dedication request, but I'm quite sincere, and it'll mean a lot if you play it. Recently, there was a death in our family. He was a little dog named Snuggles, but he was most certainly a part of... Let's come start again. From coming out of the record. Play the record, okay? Please. He's losing it. Here we go. <laughs> See, when you come out of those up-tempo goddamn numbers, man, it's impossible to make those transitions. That's and true. then you got to go into somebody dying. You know, they do this to me all the time. I don't know what the hell they do it for, but goddamn it, if we can't come out of a slow record, I don't understand it. Is Don on the phone? Okay, I want a goddamn concerted effort to come out of a record that isn't a fucking up-tempo record every time I do a goddamn death dedication. Now, make it, and I also want to know what happened to the pictures I was supposed to see this week. This is a god last goddamn time. I want somebody to use his fucking brain to not come out of a goddamn record that is uh, that, that's up tempo, and I got to talk about a fucking dog dying. <laughs> what is this fucking ponderous, man? All I know ponderous, is after all your ponderous. years was in it radio, a live show? no, but yeah, well, no, it wasn't. They would tape it so that some engineer caught that <laughs> that's and then a live released it. Show. <laughs> but here's my question: <laughs> You think that's live? In yeah. all your years of radio, <laughs> would that be live? Is there an Adam Carolla <laughs> lost it tape? There, there must be. No, I lose it on the air. <laughs> yeah, I would, I would lose it on the <laughs> right. air. Yeah, would Adams do, is actually live. <laughs> I would do all of my screaming on the air all the time. I would wait. <laughs> Until the mic got hot, get, got hot before I launched into some tirade that could have been about anything all the time. Speaking of Casey Kasem, there's a there's a channel on iHeartRadio that replays all the Casey Top 40 countdowns. You there just you go. tune you in play and, and listen to one at any oh, time. Oh, perfect. We were listening to <laughs> one this one night TNN. and the band Taco putting on the Ritz. They were in the in the somewhere in the top ten. And Casey says, "Now, for those of you who don't know, a taco is a Mexican sandwich." <laughs> Wow. For it's, those of you who don't know, a taco is a Mexican sandwich. <laughs> that is so funny. Casey, why don't you yell for Don? Is Don on the phone every time I order a goddamn taco at this fucking Mexican restaurant? Um, by the way, can we get back to your bravery? Because I'm not kidding. I am oh, so sure. impressed by this. Every single time I'm at the back of a club and there's killing on stage and I'm next, I go, forget the new thing, just go to the the stuff that works, go to the golden oldies, and maybe in the middle, if I'm killing, you know, try out that new thing. In fact, just a, a week and a half ago, I chickened out. So I'm getting ready to do a set on the James Corden show, and you have to just practice the set as is. Because right. there's only one way to do it. You just have to practice it as is. And I'm looking at this crowd, and the last guy's killing, and I go, 
I can't get up there to this crowd. It's all like dick jokes and everyone's having a good time with my like important material about anti stuff. I have this opening line where I say, is it me or does it feel like these past couple of years everyone was either asymptomatic or anti Semitic? Uh-huh. <laughs> and like funny. being asymptomatic, you could be anti Semitic, not even know you have it. And then it goes <laughs> into this whole bit. But I'm like, am I going to open with that? They're just going to stare at me like, oh, come on, man. Talk about your dick. Yeah. You know, come it's on. It's a little too heady. It's heady and it's heavy. So I was just like, I bailed. As it's like night before, you have to just practice as is. It's the dress rehearsal, and I get up there and I go, and now here is Michael Caine either saying his name or his drug of choice. My cocaine. <laughs> <laughs> My cocaine. Um, well, here's the process. The All right, let me explain to everyone listening how the process works in in the head of the comedian, which is really. It's really the same all as all human beings work with like diets. You know, they go starting tomorrow. Oh God, that's n- funny. I'm, I'm tomorrow, Diet tomorrow. And no more bagels. Oh, and, no more funny. Bagels. and then you, the next morning you're like, okay, look, half a bagel, <laughs> half a bagel's fine. You know, we have these two days away f- out from the show. You're like 80% new shit. 80% new shit. That's two days out. One day out, it's like, oh, look, 50% new. We're going 50 new. On the ride to the club, you're like, <laughs> One we're going to do three new ones. Three new ones. Then standing in the green room, listening to everyone crush, you're like, okay, one short new one, maybe in the middle. And then on stage, it's like, fuck the new one. <laughs> so that's the process. You went from 48 hours out, you're going to do 80% new shit. Wow. To on stage, total nope. cut and Cut and run from anything new. Every but comedian needs to see this clip. Last night, <laughs> I said, our fuck life. that dance. I yeah. do it every single goddamn time. And you went for it. This is a good crowd, and I'm going to do something new right at the top, and if it works, I'm going into the next new thing. And it just, kept, it just kept working. But you know what I, you know what I discovered? Oh, this is what I wanted to hear. I'm having, I had a little revelation. A discovery, a revelation on stage is the great, it happens maybe two times in 30 years. I discovered with the new stuff, you're forced to work harder, you're more engaged, and you're more animated because you don't have it worked out. So you're not mailing it in. And not that I ever mail in the other stuff, but there's a part of your brain that's so familiar with the material that it's like you're singing a song for the 1500th time you just you don't right. burn as many calories adam sold he faxes it in that's right folks <laughs> <laughs> wait that's... you guys write out your jokes completely or is it oh, just completely. the thoughts you have no, well some then... some people have different process where you have a premise and you go riff it out you just said you did that and and Chappelle does that and a lot of people do that but most Violet people was telling me it. yeah <laughs> she said, like the great comedian, Maury Amsterdam, yeah. before the show. <laughs> Is that what she would, was telling you? Yeah. Yes, uh-huh. yes. She, he would <laughs> script it all verbatim. And I remember we had a, had a discussion yeah. about Red that. Red Buttons used to really prepare. Now, everybody has a different process, but I would say 80% of comedians go on stage with their acts and their bits written and memorized. Maybe they switch up the order or whatever, but mm-hmm. what, most comedians do that. And then there's, oh, and then there's this guy, oh, Mr. Happy, and he would just go on and, oh, who knows? You know who, who knew? that is, well. Who knew? Yeah, obviously. Who's that? I mean, I don't want to say, David Letterman. I just think, ex- yeah, yeah, No, sure. who is, it's Robin Williams. Ex- yeah, okay. Oh, oh, look at this. <laughs> do you know Robin Williams? Oh, do you know obviously, this? yeah, I love Do you know I don't know. Guy. Okay, there's let's see if she knows who I'm doing Come right on. now. All right, no, let's see. This is something very contemporary. Let's see. He's very current, and if you were on his show, he would say this. Uh, well, this is very exciting, Robin. Let me tell you something. This Violet Benson, I mean, look at her. And she's not being revealing today, which I, li- I like when it's hidden, Robin. Usually she sh- Do you st- What? You still don't know who I'm doing? No. How? That, that, how could, that could be your how, fault, though, Elon. It wasn't good? It's good. <laughs> I, I Let me try it again. Oh, oh, let me tell you something, Robin. This Violet Bench. All right. Look, hey, listen to me. <laughs> I don't need criticism over here on my left. <laughs> <laughs> it's Howard, Howard Stern. Stern, right? Yeah. Oh, maybe it just wasn't good. No, there <laughs> but he even is. Howard Stern isn't isn't really reaching. I a, a obviously I know who he level. is, but I don't. I forgot his voice. I'm right. sorry. I, uh, very can you do Yakov Smirnov? <laughs> <laughs> Hello, in my country. So you want to hear my new uh, Zelensky? 
Yeah. So I'm obsessed with following him on Instagram, and you, he's mesmerizing when he talks. He just stares into the camera and speaks. What is he? What language is he speaking? Not Russian. It's what? Who are you talking about? Zelensky, the president of Ukraine. Oh, yeah, that guy. He speaks what? Are you uh, anti him because you're Russian? No. Okay. You I'm oh, yeah, a Jew. Guy. So right. at the end of the day, Russia and Ukraine both didn't fuck with the Jews. So yeah, I, yeah, girl. They kicked us out from our countries, so I'm good. Wow. So wait, you're pro? I just got confused. I'm a Jew before I'm Russian or good Ukrainian. Good for you. <laughs> so, and how do you feel about Germany? <laughs> Um, so wait a I mean, I drive a Mercedes, so I'm, oh, I'm cool with it. Disgusting as a Jew in our cars. Yeah, well, I have a, I have a deal. I drive a G wagon because I have a deal with Mercedes. I so. understand that. Good for you. You go where the money is. You're a Jew. Listen, the point yeah. is, no, I'm joking. <laughs> the point is that you're. Wait, what were you just saying? That you're. The your allegiance, I, Jewish I, but your allegiance is to Russia. That's what you're saying. To neither. Oh, to neither because they weren't good to their Jews. It's it's just it's not my fight. I don't know what to say. No, good for you. This is I so don't, many. I don't like to get political. There were many right. countries. Well, wanna, let me go on to donuts. Who yeah. <laughs> doesn't want to talk about? No, there stuff. were many countries. <laughs> Why, do you not want to talk about? I want to hear your Zelensky. No, no oh, yeah. Zelensky. So anyway, so Zelensky, yeah, cool guy. Cool what about guy. him? So when when I what does he speak? What language is he speaking in? I, I is it, it feels Russian? like it's Russian. Maybe okay. they switched to Ukrainian. I don't so know. all he does is look into the camera very seriously, and he just doesn't stop talking. And I'm mesmerized by it, and I'm trying to follow along, but I don't understand a word. So he's just like this. It's a work in progress. You know, don't insult like you did the stern. No, no, I'm, <laughs> okay, I'm trying go. to <laughs> cut okay. violence some oh, slack. So, so, okay, here we go. Using all these dollars and giving them to all the nations. What's in your head? You don't love Ukraine. Let's do what you need. You bargain. Let's do what you need. And I'm like. And then what happened? <laughs> oh, <laughs> that actually <laughs> is on point. Yeah. yeah. All right. And uh, that doesn't sound good at all. <laughs> he literally sounds and looks like a Bond villain, but he's mm -hmm. the good guy. And he it's was amazing. a comedian, which is yeah, and he was a comedian, a Jewish comedian. Isn't that crazy? I never heard of such a thing. It's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Jerry, what do you think of this Jewish comedian? Hey, what, what is he doing? So, Do you know Jerry Seinfeld, by the way? Yeah. Okay, good. <laughs> Come on. I'm sorry. Yeah, I don't know. I'm out of touch. And I get yelled at a lot. Like, all your impressions, you're so out of touch. I'm like, I'm sorry. I also grew up loving Eddie Murphy, who did, you know, the Honeymooners from his, you know, from 30 years ago. Or mm -hmm. not even when he, you know, when he was watching reruns of Honeymooners. So it's like, I hate that point when people go, you got to stay current. It's like, how about just... Be funny, and if it's a funny voice, it does, like the current president is not this guy, and yet I'm going to do him. I'm not going to stop doing him, and we're going to win very bigly. We're going to do terrific. We're probably going to win more bigly than anybody, and it's going to be a bigly wiggly, and we're going to do fantastic. And I've got a lot of people on my side. Wait, got, who is that guy? I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. That's Casey Casey. <laughs> all right, listen, I, I got something that uh, Violet's going to be all over. And we're going to take a quick break. You know, I'm married. And, and she's going to dive right into this <laughs> next like, subject. He's like, okay, so this next TikTok dance. <laughs> Everybody uh. knows this subject. And we'll do it right after this. In celebration of Jim Carolla's upcoming 92nd birthday, here's a list of 92 things Jim Carolla has never done. Number 23 caught or released a fish. Just one of 92 things Jim Carolla has never done. Let's get back to the Adam Carolla Show. All right, you guys. How old are you? I'm um, 58. 52, so this is why, I'm a young 30 year old over here. Well, Violet's gonna be an expert in this next topic. Here we go. Is it math? No, <laughs> but I know. I used to be an accountant. Really? You you, and you look like jokes. an accountant. Every time he looks at me, he looks so porn. No, so that's this. not true. And then I said math, and you, you did said that. finished, <laughs> and I car. thought porn. So when you get the when you're finished, when you're almost finished, you get the light. And I'm like, imagine if they had that in porn. That's a connection. That's the comedic that, mind. It's a comedic it mind. It's nothing to do with your looks, although they're you know they're nice. True. Anyway, do you do your own taxes? Uh, <laughs> do you do your own? <laughs> no, actually, I don't. But she's sponsored by TurboTax. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so so listen, <clears throat> I have a thing. It's 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 driving me nuts. I I'm I'm running into it in all facets of life. I am I'm angry at 
the food selections we make as, as human beings. I, I was yelling about it on stage uh, last weekend, which is my writer said, uh, my writer, you know, light beers and water, nuts, mixed I can, nuts. Yeah, I but can they, read your writer. <clears throat> but they keep, they keep bringing unsalted mixed nuts, which tastes like shit, but no, nobody cares. And I don't know why there's an option. And then I go back to the hotel room and I want to make myself a cup of coffee and there's three decafs and there's no regular to make in my hotel room. And I'm like, I, this drives me nuts. It drives me nuts. You, If you go on, if you go on production sites, mm-hmm. they'll do lunch. They'll, someone will make a, a run to the Quiznos or some sandwich shop, you know, and they'll get a box of beef sandwiches. They'll get a box of turkey sandwiches. And then there's a box of veggie subs. And then you'll go, what's the veggie subs for? And they go, so, I think the makeup lady's a vegetarian or something. But and a go, whole box. She's not here, by the way, but <laughs> it's a whole box. It's the ratio. It's like we have 20 beef, 20 turkey, and 20 veggie and there's one vegetarian, and even the vegetarian doesn't want the fucking horrible veggie sub because that's just salad in between <laughs> carbs, and it's the fucking worst. And I go, work the ratio out, you know? And they're like, we got to get three, three, and three. They do it. I was just at a taco party there, and I say they had three pork. They, no, they had one was beef, one was steak. You made your own tacos. The other was pork or fish. I can't remember. And then the other was chicken. I showed up late. All the good shit's gone. There's a huge pile of dried chicken, and that's my talk offering because no one ever really works it out. Like, they go, well, some people like chicken or some people don't eat red meat. Who? There's eight people at this fucking party. Give me a fucking name. Everyone, who <laughs> likes steak more than chicken? Every hand would go up. You made that the don't really order awkward. chicken. Yeah. That's the whole thing. All right. There's a, 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 there was a, an, a donut atrocity <laughs> war crime abortion going on in the next room, and I've yelled this a million times. Oh, no. Did you see those donuts in I the saw next room? Them, yeah. <laughs> uh, Mike Lynch, who's here, made sure to grab me before I came into the studio and show me that uh, one donut is a Captain Crunch donut. It's got mm. Captain Crunch on top. The other one is a Fruity Pebbles donut. Now, what happens inevitably with donuts? All right, let's first figure out the crowd. The crowd are not nine-year-olds with autism. (laughs) Their average age of the dude in that next room is 47 (laughs) and four months. That's I did it. I I got everyone's name. I crunched the numbers. 47, four months, and three days. That's all. They all get every Elon reference he's ever (laughs) shat out into a microphone. (laughs) That is the age of that man. All college educated. Yeah. All educated, all white, all in their 40s. But the person who gets the baker's dozen of donuts just goes, just give me like two of everything. Everything. So you get the good stuff. You get the buttermilk. You get the old fashioned. You get the cake one. But you get two, two, and two. And then you get two Rip Taylor jacked off onto this donut, and that is the frosting. You get the pink jimmies and the purple icing, and then what happens... My references are old. Rip Taylor. (laughs) Taylor, Then what happens... Now, here's the real insidious part. Yeah. Oh, it's, it's the same... Oh, we're not up to the... It's the yeah. same thing that happens with the fucking veggie subs. And, and it's the same thing that happens with Uh-oh. the trail mix. Uh-oh. At some point, all the good donuts go first. Mm-hmm. They're all gone. And then there's just the fruity pebble mm-hmm. donuts that are left. And at some point, because riders are more animal than, than man, at some point... After about five in the e- five in the afternoon, someone will pick up one of those. They'll pick off some of the fruity pebbles. They will eat it the same way the veggie subs will eventually. Someone will open it up. They'll put some cheese on there and they'll move some of the lettuce and they'll eat. And then the message, <laughs> the message to the insane person who bought the donuts is, well, I guess they liked them. <laughs> no, they did not like them. <laughs> See, they just. Eight, it, it's it's the right. C's candy box. Right. Eventually, we'll get to the weird shit, the dark chocolate with the toothpaste in it. We'll do that, but but eventually. Yeah. Don't get the mixed batch. Fucking, these are adults. 
These are 47-year-old adults. This is, a, this is a Casey Kasem level tirade, but about donuts and lettuce. It, it's a, it's about it's it, it's He's about it's his the mind. fucking veggie pizza. What is it's bothering the veggie you, sub. I, it's the decaf the coffee. Of, it's all the fucking creamer that tastes like French this, vanilla Adam. and no real cream. Stop it, everybody. Nobody wants these fucking donuts. What are you doing? And is it all just visual for you? Like, I can get the most shiny shit on top of a donut? Like, why don't you hot glue some pennies or some nickels or something on top of it? That's shiny. A bass would go for that. Jesus fucking Christ. And then so what What happens if people pick around it and they eat around it? But the cake, the cake always goes first. Then the buttermilk. And then there's the other 18 donuts that nobody really wants, but eventually they get to it. And then everyone gets fat, but not satiated. Thoughts? So did you write a letter? What did you do? Uh, Chris, you've been around me for a long time. I don't I don't buy donuts anymore. I because scream I, <laughs> at everyone. Just don't do yeah. it. And they go, well, that's what they put in the box. And I go, don't. Th- then you pick you the choose. donuts out. You, you pick the yeah. donuts out. Okay. You, adult male. Pick the donuts out. Okay, not to be that person. Oh, yes. Oh, here it is. Be that person. It's that on. would be the donut that I would pick. The, the fruity pebble one. Oh, okay, now you have to eat it. <laughs> not I, not I, would do, I would do the Captain I Crunch. I knew it. I knew and I would sorry. do the Captain like Crunch one. I would love a Captain that Crunch donut. Where is it? Somebody bring perfect. it in. Bring them in. Eat all of them. I will eat them right now. A Captain Crunch donut? Are you kidding? Well, fucking Elon's rolling high as a fucking kite right now. He needs a box at this point. He's baked out of his mind with his marijuana cigarettes and his hashish oil. That is so funny. You, the number one donut in here would be the Captain Crunch yeah, donut 100% for you. Yeah, 100%. For me. For me. That's what happens when you pop an edible at 8.43 in the morning. Marlon Williams is on his way right now. He heard about these. But yeah, I, I, but I, it's, I still don't understand. What are you angry about? He, whoever bought that it's was just principle. trying to do their best. They were just trying to please people with the donut. But what they you? can't do their best. They have to do my best. Uh, oh, for fuck's sake. I yes, see. that's what I'm Well, now I have to eat it. Oh, oh yeah. These don't. Wait, all right. No, switch, well, hold Captain on. Crunch. Perfect. <laughs> I'm vexed. You're we'll telling me that Captain Crunch Donut's been here for two hours and no one's gotten into it <laughs> yet? It, here, that's it insane. Now. You think it'd be gone? Perfect. They're saying right now. This is crazy. That is the oh wow. And who are, who are the brand? Uh, is it a bakery or is this a? It's not Duncan. Duncan doesn't make this stuff. Yeah, I don't know. Mmm, dry. It's good, right? I love it. <laughs> it's dry. It's so dry. It's dry. It is I so love it. dry. I love a dry I like. donut. Mm. This is mm. so good. All right. Mm. All right. What else is in the news? Thank you. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Jesus yeah. goddamn Christ. Oh. I'm not saying oh. anything else I want because you guys may have it. All right, favorite it. favorite donut. We got a we got a pecking order. Oh, favorite well, taco. Well, you're touching favorite... the whole thing. Now no, I can't not. eat it. No, you can. I didn't touch it. Violet. <laughs> you won't eat it if he touches. Violet, favorite favorite taco. Um Oh my god. Favorite taco? You're mock you're knocking this donut. Fish tacos. Fish this donut. No, okay, that's good. No, I'm not. That's it's 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 incredible. It's, yeah. I, I will. I will not. I will not I like insult the, the my pebbles. palate. Just picking the cereal. You like cereal, then you don't like, I like cereal. cereal. Yeah. All right. What about the donuts that are just covered with like pink jimmies? What is a jimmy? Sprinkles. Sprinkles. Yeah. Uh, I like the the gloss, glossy, the glaze, glaze. Yeah. You like glaze. Yeah. So I like. I love candy. I, I'm like a child. Do you like the cake? Or I the don't puffy like puffy ones. No, I don't like those. Cake donuts. No. They're called. No, I don't like those. <laughs> I get it. I get it. I don't know any of the people here. <laughs> I only like the donuts you don't like. I'm just uh, I all like one fish out. tacos. I like Boston. fish tacos. Yeah. All right, Elon, donut. What? Donut of choice? Yeah. Boston cream with the, the oh. cream in the side and well, the custard. That's, that's pretty know. good. But yeah. all right, with cake, the chocolate top, not cake the powder or, top. Cake or raised? What are those choices? Cake is like the thicker, cakey one, right. and then raised is like the fluffier, or like a buttermilk, like a like, like that's denser a raised donut. versus the raised. Uh, I'm gonna go with uh, raised for two hundred. Oh, God damn it! Why? Jesus Christ! Why? I have to fucking hate it. <laughs> I, you guys pre-screened for 50, your donuts. <laughs> <laughs> cake is the best. Is cake the best? Cake's the best, and this buttermilk's so best, especially if you dunk it. 
Right. You're you right. can't dunk this shit no, in you're coffee. Right. You're you right. got it's a, it's, right. a, it's a it's a it's going to be like the uh, Ohio train wreck if you dump this shit in a coffee. Like there, well, there's not enough hazmat teams to clean it up. I'm not picky with food. I'll eat whatever. By the way, is there nothing going on in the world that we should be talking about? I wasn't. Oh, we can get back to Casey Kasem clips from 1979. (laughs) Mr. There's important things to discuss. Relevant subjects. I do want to talk about something since Mm. obviously I have two amazing successful comedians here Mm. and I just want to learn as much as I can. Go ahead. Uh, what do you guys do if you ever bomb a set? Do you kind of try to pick it up after it? I've heard no, that some after. comedians purposely bomb sometimes just so they can pick it up and, and get the crowd back. That's so a guy what, telling what? you, no, that was on purpose. <laughs> <laughs> just I like right. doing that. Let me tell you something, man. I plan that bomb. <laughs> no, you have to lean into the bomb. You have to, it's the elephant in the room. So you have to address it. You have to, you know, by the way, speaking of Johnny Carson, he did that the best. When a joke wouldn't hit, he would just do that, okay, you know, just okay, I guess, you know, and just you have to acknowledge that you're bombing and then you work your way out of it. You go right. to a bit that you know is going to do well. If you ignore it or you get nervous, I always tell like new comedians or anyone that's nervous, I go, the more nervous you are, the more nervous the audience is, the more relaxed and fun you're having, the more relaxed and fun the so audience, that you project whatever energy is going to be brought back to you. So you have to just chill out. You you can't be nervous because that will ruin everything. Yeah. So once you bomb, you get nervous and dry mouth. No, you got to lean into it, acknowledge it. What's your right. What's your take on it? I never. He's bomb. like I've never bombed. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, what's bombing? <laughs> I don't. I, I do not. I, I I do not bomb very often. But it's, maybe it's because I don't do it enough to to mm. bomb. Um, and I usually do it sort of in front of my crowd, you know. So it's it's harder to bomb. Um, I I think you definitely have to point it out and kind of make fun of it, and yeah. Uh, yeah. and the audience will be a little uncomfortable with the bomb. And then if you make a joke about it. Not working, you know. I, I swear to God, if you could, you could tell a joke and bomb, and then you could make some comment like, "Well, that's coming off the set list," or you know, right. I, they're not all that won't be on the nine thirty. <laughs> right, show. they're yeah. not all tens, folks. <laughs> right. You know, whatever they'll laugh every single time yeah. because they're almost feel bad it's a relief yeah. it's, it's, like, it's, it's like there's a lot of laughter at a funeral right. if people are very pent up and anxious and upset and yes. stuff and then somebody makes a joke or something there's always an eruption of laughter that far yeah. outweighs the joke like it's a much bigger because it's a pent up sort of feeling Steve Martin said that in his book that every laugh is just sort of pent up tension and then the release of mm-hmm. that pressure right. um, but h- here's my question how did you do an hour I well, just it's different because it was in front of my audience, yeah, my still, people, so I feel like it side. worked. Yeah. That's what I think. What were you talking about for an hour? Oh my gosh, I don't know. I blinked out. Just anything. What was your what was your opening line? My opening line? Yeah, when you I, went up. I don't even remember. I wrote some of it that morning. What's your best joke? Your favorite joke? I, to do I now? genuinely don't because every time I just write something new. But recently, that's my not agent. A good I know. <laughs> yeah. I know. So I'm just figuring this out. So this is one of the things that's very new to me. That's why I'm so fascinated with other people in this. So. My agent recently told me to start going to perform in front of other comedians, only five minute sets, Mm -hmm. and it's during comedian night at the Hollywood Improv. So it's literally people who don't give a shit about me and the opposite of my audience. So recently. Don told you to do that? Is Don (laughs) on the phone? Fucking Don. Is Don on the phone? And last time I did it, I bombed because my jokes are more for mm. women and it was about dating and i kid you not i was bombing and it was a f- and it was good for me to experience that because i haven't experienced that so it was i didn't get to react the way i should have which would be you know to make fun of myself yeah. instead i kind of froze and i kept going with my jokes and i was like for fuck's sake and then i tried to make some stupid racist joke and then I was just you know how racists say this and this by the way I'm not racist I promise right. and then I was just like silent <laughs> and then I was just laughing at myself and it was just like <laughs> it was so effing awkward and I was like okay fuck this I have dinner plans I'm gonna go so uh, yeah that was a good experience uh, but I'm just gonna keep coming back because I have daddy issues so 
if you know a girl with daddy issues, I mean, oh, I'm just going to keep coming back yeah, until you, you love me. You have to work it out, either in <laughs> therapy or stand-up. But you yeah, have something both. that Adam and I don't have. Looks. Vagina. Uh, no. Um, like you, Tits. No, you have like your, you, you have these good looks, so it's like why you started. It's actually, I feel like it goes against me. No, 100% in comedy. I started with Sarah Silverman, and it, always just adorable, beautiful, and she would get up there and people I don't like, know that name. <laughs> <laughs> and be, it's your sister-in-law. <laughs> and be, your ex-sister-in-law. And people would just be like, <gasps> like oh my god she's gorgeous and and we would talk about like you just have to get past that you have to know that's going to be like steph younger you look her up on uh on anything uh, tiktok whatever it's blowing up all over the place she's gorgeous she just did the orpheum theater with me last week we did uh the chosen comedy festival and i said to her again forget your looks you're a comedian tonight and because she's just genuinely funny she's like a funny person trapped in a gorgeous person's everything yeah it's really hard to be but us, i said you but know? you have to forget you <laughs> have to forget that and you have to know in your head yeah the audience is going to be taken aback because they're used to goofball looking dudes like us and when you show up it's like whoa what's this and then the women are threatened like are you staring at her and the and the, and the guys are sort of she's a comedian oh, there she is that's steph yeah she's brilliant sure? brilliant look her up she has the best Wait, I, 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 know, I know is she is she she's from miami Stefachka, yeah miami she yeah, yeah, yeah. she does impressions she's impressions, really characters. pretty and funny yeah she's a genius but she looks like that so she gets on stage and everyone's just like, whoa. Yeah. And you have to plow through that moment and be funny immediately because then they'll just be like, oh, uh, who's this hot chick? The second you're funny, by the way, audiences in general, what is it? Seven seconds? Eight well, seconds? Well, it was comedians, what do you dude. Think? It was other comedians writing their jokes. That's the that's the audience he's making me go against, which oh, is it's everybody great. everybody worrying about their own set. Yeah. Anyway. And I, I yeah, was yeah, yeah, yeah. before Forget my dinner that. plans. Wait, I was in a that? tight black dress. Are we talking about makeup? A, what? Sorry. Sorry. Yeah, at the improv. Oh, wait, the are we comedians. talking about an open mic or are we talking about it's something else? It's a side else? room. It's a side room, and then the the lady from the improv, the one that books you, she writes the notes for me to tell me how I can be better. So then wow. I just go, yeah, or some so, other notes. But is it an open mic or is it something else? I'm trying to think. I don't know. It's just a bunch of. It's a side room, so it's a bunch of other comedians, and they're just testing well, their nor- new jokes. Normally, can when anybody do when this? When the or? audience are all no. comedians, it's uh, it would be traditionally like an open mic. They would call it. Right. Yeah. Okay. Maybe. I'm. I guess it I'm. Probably on, was. It's, it's on Wednesdays. They don't give notes at open mics. That's mic, true. Either. Yeah. Maybe it's something. Well, she else. gives me notes. Mm-hmm. What were some of her notes? Uh, to just go into my jokes more instead of switching off to a different topic and then jokes just, are important she said it's mm. important that I kind of introduce myself so people are more aware of why I'm making certain jokes yeah who you are where you're yeah. from the whole thing so that, that was really good your the, background the whole Russian thing lived in Israel you gotta talk gonna, about that I, I think I'm gonna focus on that especially because I know with female comedians a lot of times the thing that goes against them is the fact that they may lean towards sex jokes Always. so mm-hmm. yeah. I want to stay away from that but my jokes good. were about I kind of came on stage I was dressed in a tight black dress because before my dinner, I had like full on makeup and I was in heels. Doing your and racist I, jokes. And mm. I come on, I'm just like, I don't, I don't, I'm not into casual sex. Here's why. I'm like, I would never fuck anyone in this room. And I'm making <laughs> these jokes. Of course, I was like, fuck you. Right. You know? I'm an idiot. So was one, of, was one of the notes too many Phil Collins references? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> when did you those, start yeah. doing stand up and why? Um, can't ask lit- why. No, I'm like, what was the light bulb that went, I, I want to do that? Well, I think I've, it was kind of just something to try something new. I, I've always been just this awkward kid. Mm-hmm. So I've always just made fun of myself. And this is just something to try and test out. And yeah, it's it's crushing for your ego, but it's it's good. I mean, it was nice to bomb because I mean, I cried about it afterwards and I got over it. And you know what is an easy crutch always like what I do? You do voices. I'm sure you do like Russian accent, Israeli. No, I don't. An easy you crutch don't? would be behind social media and to stick to your fans. So I'm trying to do the opposite. But right. it, when I did no, but my... I mean, when you're on stage... Oh, I got a bit for the two of you. Oh, go ahead. Mr. and Mrs. Zelensky. Uh, Let's try that. that. Are you ready? Yes, you do. You, do you right. could do a Russian accent. No, I can't. Yes, all can. right, oh. here we go. Yes, here we go. You can. All Mr. Right. <laughs> all right. So, Mr. and Mrs. Zelensky are at a uh, Olive Garden in Alhambra. And see. I want a divorce. <laughs> cheese sticks. I have a basket of unlimited breadsticks for you two. I'm Mike. I'll be your server. 
Я не понимаю, чего ты говоришь. You had it going. We could do that. Yeah. That could be me. You can open for porn. The All right, real quick. Yeah. Uh, Mrs. Mr. And Mrs. Zelensky. Yes. Yes. Uh, at an airport. Yes. Arguing. All right. What, what you have? <laughs> wait. wait. <laughs> You have boarding passes, or do I have you? No, I stupid. Get, no, You're stupid. the one that. I gave you boarding passes. You have to. What are you doing? Where are the kids? You, we have kids. We forgot kids at home <laughs> again. What You're do you so mean? stupid. Whose kids are these? You big Russian whore. You don't even know who the father is. It's your dad. It's my father. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right. Anyway, for <laughs> that was, that was, that was all right. Fun. That was fun. I, I don't was know fun. why you guys didn't lean into that, we man. We lean in more. And it's a, it's a, it's perfect. It's comedy. <laughs> Have I Donald and Melania? <laughs> oh, can that's we do, good. Can we do that? Are you ready? No. You know, I've got, you I've got, got a bomb, <laughs> and we're looking very closely at a running mate by the name of Kanye. <laughs> and we're gonna, and he's not very friendly to the Jews. And I've got a Jew daughter and very little Jewy grandchildren. And I've got to make a choice between Kanye and Ivanka. <laughs> and I don't know what to do. Can we talk about something important? You always bring these hard-hitting topics that we get into. This is about donuts and fucking. <laughs> this is ridiculous. Just I think to donuts are very important. What kind of episode? By is the way, this? these two devoured their favorite donut <laughs> right, right in the microphone. Devoured. I, well, we're on. We you know, had one it's, crunch China. berry. It's that so was it. dry that it waters in that, your that, mouth. That it, is, it is so dry. Mm. <laughs> okay. All right. Let's take a break. We'll get uh, into some. Tie it in easy. You know. We'll, we'll get some. <laughs> hold on. Yeah. Here we go. Uh, tell you it's rough, you know. Uh, I got no respect. Know what I mean? You know who that is, by any chance? Uh, Halloween was rough, too, you know. I used to knock on people's doors and say, trick or starve to death, you know. We had nothing. I tell you, we had no food. Mm. Rodney Danger. All right, let's yeah, take a break. Yeah, yeah, I dated that guy. I'm, <laughs> All right. Back. I'm sure you've seen his balls. Quick break. We'll do the <laughs> news. He used to have his balls out always. Oh, nice. Oh, he did? Yeah, he wore robes. And he would just I know, have, but oh. I didn't know there was a thing. Oh, yeah, you know that. I'm just trying to tell her. No, I, I but I didn't know it was a thing. Oh, like, the balls were always out. Rodney's balls. I know. Yeah. So what happened was is he was doing... Uh, oh, are we on air still? Yeah. Okay, good. He was doing Love Line. See, now this is important. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We're doing uh, Love Line. Okay. The uh, TV, show, TV show. MTV. And Rodney was a guest. for. We gang taped like four shows in mm -hmm. a day. And he was like on the last show or the second to last or something. But for me, it was like, hey, Rodney Dangerfield is... Oh, I know that guy. Ronnie Wait, where's his balls? Ronnie they're, they're right below my belly. Yeah. <laughs> oh, there it is. <laughs> oh, no. Is that his thing? Is that a CGI oh, penis? Oh, God. I don't think. Aww. It looks like a penis coming out of a vagina. That's the He's an Audi, right? Hey. Uh, yeah, that's his Audi. Man, that, we know, know we have a problem with this show, which is you can't show the pictures in the middle of a story because then everyone starts yelling oh, sorry. at the screen. Let's hear the story. So what we do sorry. is we... We go into a story and, and then we'll then, put a picture up and everyone goes, "What? Oh, yeah, sorry, whoa. sorry. Like, especially a penis. Do it. Yeah, okay. <laughs> go ahead. So, so what you, you can do it after the story. All right, you're on the show. Uh, I'm host. <laughs> you're hosting the show. Yes, I am the show. Yeah. And Rodney Dangerfield's coming in, and he's Rodney Dangerfield. He's a legend. So I. Oftentimes, I would just go in and talk to the guests before the show. It's uh, nice to see you. Good. Thanks for you doing this. Them, yeah. Say whatever you want. You know, I'd always just tell them it's a weird format. Some people get nervous. I just say, you can do no wrong. Say what you want. So, like, I walked in to his dressing room and he was sitting there with his fucking bathrobe on. Again, I've done a million shows. I've never brought a bathrobe to a show. <laughs> you might wear sweatpants right. and, and, and then and change flip flops right. and then change, or you just dress and, and do it, which I would do. But he's just laying there in a bathrobe, this nutsack dangling <laughs> in the wind. And then I come in and I go, uh, "Hey, uh, you know, Mr. Dangerfield, you know, big fan. Uh, I just wanted to, you know, say hi. Thank you for coming in." He's like, "Why?" <laughs> and I'm like, "I I just want to say hi." Yeah, okay. I'm like. Uh, okay, all right. He's like a total douche. Wow. His balls are hanging out. I don't know. Oh, 
all right. Anyway, thank, I'm host of the show, so thanks. He's like, what are you doing in here? And I'm like, I'm all right. It's my show. So then we we do the show, and at the end of the show, and the end of the taping, the producers always run out with a cue card, and the cue card would say, you know, you'd go, your name, you know, you go, Hi, I'm B Real from Cypress Hill. Watch me on Loveline tonight, eleven thirty. And then there'd be one more where you'd go, Hi, I'm B Real from Cypress Hill. Watch me tomorrow night, eleven thirty, or something like that. You just get like three of those the, that they could slug versions, in. Yeah. The Rodney's sitting there and they like come running out and they go, Just say I'm Rodney Dangerfield will be watching tonight. And he's like, I gotta get a haircut. <laughs> And And they're like, we can just do it right now. Like, the cameras are rolling. We got the cue card. Just say, hi, I'm Rodney Dangerfield. And he's like, nope, I can't because I have to get my hair cut. And they're like, well, it just will just take 30 seconds. He's like, no. He refused. I'm going to get a haircut. A haircut seems like a weird. That's a weird excuse. Yeah. It's a weird out. You could reschedule a haircut. We're taping a promo for a TV show here. Well, is there a barber? If, if, if what we were talking about, Ronnie Dangerfield doing was forty five seconds. Yeah, yeah. Do, yeah. Is, you think you his barbers like you're supposed yeah. to be here at two thirty, yeah. not two thirty one? No, Mr. that was funny an guy. Excuse. Nothing funny about tardiness. He didn't want. He was first of all, he was probably in a mood that day based on your encounter in the dressing room. I'm guessing he was in a mood. We all have our days. He was in a mood. In his defense, he was nice to me the few times I met him. But anyway, he whatever. Maybe he just didn't you want like to be you. mean to me as Ronnie Dangerfield. Not uh, the Adam tell you, this guy is like a Toyota. You know? <laughs> Hey, yeah. Mr. Dangerfield, just happy uh, to see you. Uh, yeah, I got to shave my balls. Excuse me, I got to run. I got a barber waiting to shave my nutsack. You I'm know? Just, I want to thank uh, you for hey. coming in, that's all. Uh, fuck off. You know? <laughs> <laughs> all right, now we'll take a break, and we'll do some news right after this. Well, I want to thank O'Reilly Auto Parts for climbing on board in 2023. You know, I love cars. To me, they're like my children. I'm, I have a truck. I got an SUV. I got sports cars. I got race cars. And they're all cars. That's the key. And if you love cars, then you got to love O'Reilly Auto Parts. It's O Rewards Bonus Points Month at O'Reilly Auto Parts. Shop in store or online to get points and rewards sent straight to your phone or inbox. Get two, three, or even four times bonus points on select purchases to get you to your next reward even faster. Receive a $5 reward for every 150 O Rewards points. If you're already an O Rewards member and not receiving your rewards, just add your email or mobile phone number and get a $10 reward for updating your existing account. Sign up is quick and easy at O'ReillyAuto.com, or you can do it in store. That's O'ReillyAuto.com. Is it me or does it feel like these past couple of years, everyone was either asymptomatic or (laughs) anti-Semitic? And like being asymptomatic, you could be anti-Semitic and not even know you have it. Or you could have a severe case. Go to the super spreader events. You know, the rallies with the tiki torches. The Jews will not replace us. We don't want to replace you. We just want to put braces on you. (laughs) Replace you? We just want to manage your portfolio, okay? If we replace you, how are we going to invoice you exactly? Did you think that far ahead, you big dum-dum? replace you. No, we want to place you in a 30-year fixed low-interest mortgage. Fees and rates may apply. That's Alon Gold on the Adam Carolla Show. That's that was so good. good. Now, that is some good stuff. He's, you know, he's Jewish and he talks about uh, all the hatred out there. You know, they're having hate day uh, this weekend. Did you hear about that? No. Isn't that crazy? They announced the white supremacists were going to have a day of hate. Like, isn't that every day a day? It's like, <laughs> For them, yeah. Yeah, sorry sorry to reference porn again, but that'd be like a porn <laughs> actor going, we're going to have a day of anal. Wait a minute, oh. isn't every day anal, at some point it anal happens. Be, yeah. You call it a hate day, I call it a corporate gig. Oh, because I'm speaking at God, that, that's uh, hilarious. that rally. By yeah. the way, here's what I noticed about you. <laughs> this is what I like about Adam, and you said it yourself. Not only are you brave when you try out the new stuff, you know, after everyone's killing, but you will admit to having your tirades on air. 
because it was fascinating to witness a mini tirade when the picture came. Every time I'm telling a story and a goddamn picture comes up, it's not on the phone. <laughs> <laughs> you got to wait to the end of my fucking story. You yeah, had I, a little mini tirade on I the air, though, you my, do it. my tirades a, for the I air. I admire that. I yeah. admire that. Someone else would wait and cut, and you go back, and you go, what the fuck are you doing, Shoy Perry? You did it live. We're doing it live. That was another guy who had a crazy. All right. Yeah. We're doing it live. Yeah, we'll do it people, live. Lawrence O'Donnell had one. And what, what, people so don't, what people don't understand is when the person has the meltdown or the tirade, there is, this is months, maybe years in the making. I used to have tirades and meltdowns too, but it's because you fucking asked somebody specifically to do something 14 times, and it's the 15th time where you have the meltdown. But let's be honest, it's still about something else. Mm. It's about something deeper. It's about stuff you're angry about in your life that you well, can't control, what it, what and it manifests well, through that tirade. Well, what it's about, no, I mean, yes and no. Yeah, it's, sometimes it's a guy not, pisses you off 20 no, times. No, no, it's not about that. the specific thing. It's about not being heard. Mm. Like, you just go, here's what I'm asking for. Here's what I want. Another rich and then you're white not man not heard. being heard, folks. That's Look at that. right. Heterosexual. <laughs> Heterosexual rich six, white man. And ten. I'm not heard. Yes, it's about <laughs> I need a voice. <laughs> it's about something happening repeatedly, yes. and you are not being heard. No, I get you're that. Being, you're telling them, do not do this or fix He's this like, or whatever. He's like, it's about not being heard, and you're just talking over it. Right. And you're and like, yeah, exactly. I know exactly what you mean. Exactly. We Hear you, Adam. We hear you, we see you, and we love you, yeah. and we accept Aww. you. We yeah. accept you. Yeah, I've had uh, plenty of meltdowns. On, yeah, but on I like that microphone. you do it on the air. Like, you saw that. Don't do the... You, who stops the story to yell about stopping the story? You mm. do. Funny. That's right. You do. That's Amazing. Why, that's Amazing. Amazing. Well, right. I think if you're just always yourself, then you have nothing to hide, and you can never be canceled. Right. Nice. Right. Or you end up like Ellen. <laughs> Loves dancing. <laughs> Except for I went to a wedding with her with a live band. And <laughs> guess who didn't dance? No dancing. No dancing. She's <laughs> too cool to dance when the cameras are I going. She had, a, not, she had to get a haircut. I, who do not like dancing, dance, dance at because the, the band was that good. Ellen the dancer refused. Refused. Oh, this is yeah about this. Ellen DeGeneres, folks, <laughs> at a wedding doesn't dance. It's I a mean, it's it's a Geico yeah. commercial. It's like who's Geico. happier right. than Ellen at a wedding with a band? <laughs> Zero dancing. And she's just because she doesn't like there. dancing, but she likes you to think she likes dancing. Portia, let's go. Just like I like you to think <laughs> I like donuts with all those things. That's on top right. Of it. But right. you and really don't. Put apparently, up to the I don't. Portia, yeah. there's mud at our front door in Montecito. <laughs> <laughs> We've got to go. All right. Yeah, I don't do Ellen. I don't know if you noticed that. No, it's it's fine. It's all it's all added. Yeah, I knew what yeah. you meant. Yeah, yeah. What all else? Right. Uh, what else is in the news, Robin? Yeah, go well, ahead. Well, there there are rumors. You brought up Kanye or yeah. Mr. Trump, but there you know this. No, I'm oh. just like another Kanye thing. Amazing. You're over it. No, I love hearing about it. All right, him. spit okay. it out. Here <laughs> we go. Let's go. Well, well. So Kanye and Adidas have allegedly reached an agreement. To work together again, just to sell off the rest of these Yeezys oh, uh-huh. that they have. Uh-huh. Um, wow. and this this is rumored, but so no, but the rules are no new Yeezy designs. Um, they're only going to sell current Yeezy branded products, um, and no update on the future after they're all sold. So I mean, they took a big hit when they when they decided not yes. to work with Kanye again. So it looks like they're getting back together. Yeah, well, look. good for him. Good for him. Right? I'm so happy. <laughs> Look, I I don't know why we're surprised. You know, like ten minutes ago, Beyonce's playing some Arab, Arab Emirate company or something, or they they you know castrate gays or something. It's like she did Arabia. it for the money, and yeah. it's like yeah, everyone does everything for the money. We judge for about ten minutes, then we we speculate. Oh, by the way, God damn it, Ben, you got to find the clip. I forgot to write this down. From yesterday's show, remember I was asking for Jane Fonda's net worth, and I yelled this is, out, "This is the other thing he does in the middle of the show." Two hundred million dollars, oh, yeah. and you never gave me Jane Fonda's net worth on the screen. You said, "Wrote you, you guys want to guess?" Oh, you wanted to guess. I wrote on your screen. Do you got? Do you guys want to guess? Oh. I have it. He oh. produces and gives notes find the on the show. Find the tape of me saying two hundred million. I thought you said one hundred million. Uh, okay, well, yeah. well, listen to the tape. 
Another thing. It you was at be- the end of the show yesterday. We'll find it, and then we will look up Jane Fonda's net worth because she's only going to the Borscht Belt yeah. prom the opera ball because you got to give money to her grandkids. Fuck that! You want money? It. Everyone wants money. Just fucking eat it. Just uh, uh, Beyonce's going to some uh, uh, evil empire to perform mm-hmm. because she wants twenty four million dollars. Jane Fonda's going to the ball with the old Russian guy because she wants I don't know hundred thousand dollars. Yeezy and Kanye and and Adidas. Everyone just fucking wants money. And then we all sit around and go, "How could you work?" That's what everyone does. All the time, everywhere. So let's just get over it. Correct. I agree. Yeah. And I don't, by, by the way, if you just go, if you're Beyonce, I would just turn it back on everyone. Like, and I go, what are you doing performing for this nation that uh, hell, uh, d- 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 tries to hobble the LGBT community? I'd, be, I'd just go, hey, I'll offer you 24 million bucks for two hours work. Would you do it? Yeah. With first class airfare? I'll go to the ball with that guy. Uh, Right. Go suck that Russian guy's (laughs) dick in the bathroom of the ball (laughs) for uh, for that kind of bread. So this fucking just that that's the answer. Yeah. That's the answer, everybody. I agree. Uh Also, wait a minute. uh, Here's here's me guessing what Jane Fonda made. We should all take sure. guesses, oh, but sure. I gotta say it's a hundred million. Mm. Ah. The one she wow. Chris is right. Yeah. I was right here. All right, but you're right. But it even makes my point better. She's worth two hundred million <laughs> dollars, and her answer was, "I got to go to the ball with this Russian guy because I got grandkids. Wow, who are in their thirties and right. pay her bills." To but pay she her, had a bit, she's being bill. cheeky then, right? If she's saying something like that, I mean, it's I public knowledge that she's too, worth two hundred million. Yeah, but being worth something and the money you have in the bank are two separate things. That's true. Yeah, she's probably cash poor. Yeah, but yeah. no, <laughs> like if you, she, if you went out to buy like to a deli if with her, she could really pull. If you look up my net worth, it's like nineteen million dollars. I don't have nineteen million dollars. Right. Yeah, I have that yeah. similar yeah. thing too. I have so nothing, she's, and my net worth is like yeah, she's two hundred million. So she's probably only no, got like nobody, thirty million cash. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But <laughs> so, nobody yeah. who's a hundred millionaire says phrases like, "Well, we got to keep the lights on in this point." You know what I mean? It's mm-hmm. like that's a ridiculous thing that well, she said for my grandchildren. I just I feel like it's so silly because everyone does it people will do anything for money and it's just just another thing to be outraged about just let it be rich people get richer it's how it works i yeah. i genuinely don't give a shit if like i don't even care when people around me do whatever they need to do for money as long as they don't specifically tell me really like you, yeah. i think you should die because i hate all jews and i'm like okay that makes me uncomfortable maybe we shouldn't work together but if i even tell people who work for me i don't care what your opinions are i don't even give a shit if you hate the jews just keep it to yourself and, you know, <laughs> we can continue working. If I hear yeah. from you, then I'm going to have to fire. It's going to get mm. awkward. You My level is dislike. You, you have to just dislike the hate I can't do. Right. Dislike yeah. is I just I don't care about other. I, 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 I wish we could go back to. What are you? To, I'm, just, I'm annoyed by the Jews, which is even lower. <laughs> than don't even dislike, care. Slightly irritating. There's That's hate. Okay. There's dislike, and then there's just sort of I just, annoying. I wish we can go back to where I didn't know people's political opinions and what they did on their weekends yeah. and who they're, the teachers who they're fucking every day. Like I just I don't care. I don't care. Don't tell me. I don't care. Right. All right, so we don't care. I like Kanye. We don't care. Sorry, well, Kanye. All right, well, I'm with you. No, but also, I'm also so against cancel culture. It's nice to see someone get uncanceled, even someone as despicable as him. And he is despicable, and not just to our people. Like, the the things he's done and said, like, slavery was a choice. This is like, these are despicable things to say that fly in the face of history and reality. So we should dislike him and not really support him. But if you're a company and you got earnings and you got to, you know, hit your uh, yearly whatever... Uh, cancel culture yeah. is the stupidest thing. It's We're okay the, with we, forgiveness. In a sense. little forgiveness, you, you know, and, and let him repent in his own way, but yeah. not with this. All so right. I'm okay All with right. that. So um, another story, Sam Brinton. Yeah. you know that name? Yeah, that guy's <laughs> awesome. So former, former Department of Energy official, Sam Brinton. So Sam was in a lot of trouble a few months ago because he uh, was stealing suitcases and luggage from an airport. Right. Yes. And so eventually got fired. But there's a fashion designer, Asia Kamsen, 
who dragged Brenton on Twitter, saying that her luggage went missing back in 2018 at the Ronald Reagan Airport in Virginia. Do you guys know this person we're talking yeah, we'll about? Yeah, put up a picture. Oh, it's yeah. such a freak show. Whatever it, you do, don't put up a picture in the middle of the story. Uh, well, you can put it up now. I'm a, <laughs> well, <laughs> if I thought guests were professional uh, enough to not... Oh, to sorry. Go, oh, hey, 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 look at, look at what oh, chat. Look wow. at that. Don't but they change. can't. No. They can't. And by no. the way, you're Who's shiny. You've joined... <laughs> Dr. Drew's been on the sorry. air for, with me for 20 years. He can't do it either. He just literally points and yells, look at that! <laughs> like right in the middle of something. I'll so, learn for next time. Oh, I've seen him. He, yeah. Uh, yes. Or them. They, them. them. I've seen them. Ben, yeah. you need to find... Uh, White House, White House uh, press secretary or PR, oh, so Jean Pierre. KJP. KJP. Yeah, KJP. She had, I, I liked it on my Twitter, but she had a little rant about how inclusive the White House was. Oh, this, sure. is, this is part of it. We're just going to hire a bunch of he, right. she's, and shit, and then it'll be awesome. So, Ex- Sam. Except yeah. for they have jobs to do. That's, that's the, there is a little rub, like, hey, we need a pilot who's transitioning. Like, yeah, but how is he at flying a plane? Blah, 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 blah. Let's just find a guy who's transitioning first. We'll figure out landing when we get to it. Yeah, okay. Be nice if they could do their jobs. All right. Yeah. So yes. Sam, working for the White House, travels a lot. And um, so accused of stealing suitcases from airports on two separate occasions. What was his title? Department of Energy official. Right. Yeah. Oh. So, um, so, and that's why... That's why they have been in the news. Um, but Brenton could be looking at five years behind bars if convicted in Minnesota and at 10 for the one in Nevada, right? So yeah. dealing with court. So anyway, this fashion designer hears about this and then sees pictures and and is like looking at the dresses going, I had some custom dresses that looked like that that were stolen in 2018. Oh, yeah, we yeah. have like side God. by sides, right? Byron? No way. I had the same thoughts about the band, the plain white tees. I was <laughs> like, you fuckers, <laughs> that's a shirt I have. Sorry. Right. Well, and, anyway, they're, they're the exact dresses. So, <laughs> yeah. So, so <laughs> what people don't really understand is I think a lot of this is a fetish, not a fetish to wear women's clothes, but a fetish to wear a woman's clothes who that I stole from the airport and then walked down the red In carpet. Public, yeah. Yes, because otherwise it doesn't make sense. If you, you should not if, do if you that. just go, I'm I, I'm a cross dresser, I like women's clothing, well then you could purchase women's clothing. <laughs> Or you could steal women's clothing and sit alone in your hotel room and beat off. But you have to walk down the red carpet in it. And I feel the same way. We're missing the point on like a lot of this stuff. Like the it's a dude. Fetish. Yeah, the dude who identifies as a woman who he can go into the ladies locker room or the YMCA. Mm. We go, oh, he just wants to see some titties. It's like. This is a fetish for this person. We're not getting to the right. real point. This is a fucked up person Wait, who's living out a fetish. How do I pronounce her name? Is it w- Winona? No, no, Winona, Winona Ryder. Ryder. Yeah. So it's she Chris. used to steal all the time. So it wasn't it wasn't the fetish. It was more the probably the thrill or whatever. Yeah. So it's right. kind of the same thing because she could afford the stuff. It right. is a fetish. That makes it a fetish. Yeah, yeah right that now. makes it oh, a fetish. Okay. Then yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Just, well, anyway. I used to steal when I was a child until I grew out of it. But you're doing it out of desperation for or for fun? Uh, I stole. So I shoplifted a, p- a lot. Me. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, I just always got in trouble when I was a child. Oh, wow. <laughs> a cry oh, for help. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Until you beat the shit out of me, then I was like, never mind. <laughs> wow, All right. it's fine. Save yeah. for the stage. Yeah, <laughs> save it for the stage. <laughs> I got no more talk about Phil Collins. I <laughs> will <laughs> <laughs> uh, right, well, anyway. Here's here's uh. I see it and Sam. So yeah, same exact. Oh yeah, exact dress. and that was a custom dress. So there's, that's a one of one. Did he yeah. steal her lipstick too? <laughs> maybe, I think so. maybe it's all the same mm-hmm. suitcase. Well, anyway, there's He's this got really that great fan in his bedroom. So we mm-hmm. all love like the team when the TMZ catches TMZ yeah. catches like celebrities and asks and hounds mm-hmm. them for questions. Well, Fox News got Sam, mm-hmm. and some of the qu- oh. I just loved. I just loved it. Right, walking out of the courtroom. This. Yeah, we it's great. That's gonna be awesome. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's and and Sam, are they rolling the, it? The good no, news is he, he, he gets to go to a probably go to a women's prison. I I guess, but we'll uh, we'll see if we can roll. Oh, we don't have it. We're still looking for it. Okay, right. No worries. Um, all right. Well, let, let, anyway, let's just move on here. So, Alec Baldwin. Mm. Oh, Alec Baldwin. <laughs> <laughs> so Alec. he had he had some charges dropped recently, right? Um, mm-hmm. Is that the guy with the gun? Yeah. 
Got it. Yeah, that's There's the so many Baldwins. I don't know. Yeah, there, you know, wow, yeah to... there are a lot of Baldwins. <laughs> yeah. Wow, you know that this actually, one. Congrats. No, yeah. she's, she's right. They're still alive. So I'm yeah, sure there are other Baldwins with guns, though. Yeah. The Steven probably has a gun. He's packing. Yeah, he's packing. But mm-hmm. he's the one that right. inadvertently shot the uh, yeah. 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 Yeah, so they so the Santa Fe County District Attorney's Office dropped the firearm enhancement rap tied to him and um and so after that charge was dropped, Rust is now filming in a new location. They they went to over to Yellowstone in Montana. Oh, really? Can you why are they still filming this movie? I okay, I don't know. I mean, they filmed an entire Batwoman movie, and, and then, then scrapped they it. scrapped it completely. Yeah. So I have there a better is question. Such a who thing. was the cinematographer that signed on to the rest oh, of this yeah. job? That's a good point. Yeah. He, uh, yeah, so what they did is they had a gun enhancement thing, which would have really fucked up Baldwin, except for the gun enhancement thing was after the crime. Right. And so the judge was like, this crime happen here mm. and then your new law passed six months later Timing. and you cannot grandfather right. that crime into that although and a, a a separate but equal note um charles manson got the death penalty in fucking california in like 1969 and was going to be put to death and then we we canceled the death penalty in like 1972 and then he fucking hung around giving interviews making art and selling books for the next 40 years while we paid for him i would make the same argument which is this happened before this and he was given the fucking death penalty so he is grandfathered into the gas chamber Correct. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. What costs more, the death penalty uh, for someone to get executed or for them to stay in jail for a lifetime? Well, or, uh, it would uh, be cheaper there. if we just did it my way, which yeah. is this firing squad. <laughs> Soon you walk right out of court, <laughs> right out of the courtroom in into the yard, <laughs> yeah. and right there. lean up against these hay bales, <laughs> and we'll just do it there. Oh my god! They they argue that it costs more because there's all these appeals and there's such a such a process yeah. that the process costs more. But it wouldn't. I'll bet you in like Iran, it doesn't cost more. <laughs> <laughs> I'll bet you when you get the death penalty in Iran, it. Cost very little. <laughs> yeah. You have discount price. <laughs> All the Persians right now are listening, going, You have discount price on death penalty. <laughs> By the way, imagine going back to the Rust set and the crew. It's just like day one. It's like, so how was your break? And Alec Ball was like, I avoided uh, manslaughter charges. <laughs> Wait, uh, he's in, going back. To, he's still they're included going in the movie. Back. He's in the movie. They're oh, going he's back in the movie. That. Like but, the but how awkward is it? No, this is like not even a joke. That's it weird. is such a tragedy that this woman lost her life in the middle of making a movie yeah, because so of a sad. gun going off. Now they have to go back uh, to set as if like nothing happened, and they have to continue playing and acting. You know, have you ever been to a funeral of a young man? who died of autoerotic asphyxiation. No, I have not. I have. Really? Autoerotic ex- <laughs> So how is this relevant? It's the exact same. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, I it's, have it's, in it's, high it's, school. It's the I exact think. same experience, just, which is you have to go to this place. You have to mourn mm, this person. Right. Right. There's an Everyone's aware of what happened before <laughs> this day. Right. Wow. And it's just weird. When That's I was good. in high That's school, there was, be. there was a kid in my class that used to get off mm. on choking himself. So he used to always hang a rope in, around his neck, and then he would put it around something. So by the time he kind of passes out and leans forward, the, the rope would loosen up, and he would eventually wake up. And then one day, accidentally, when he lost consciousness or whatever— the rope uh, got tied to something, mm. and it didn't loosen up, so he died. Mm. And uh, yeah, so that was awkward. Obviously, we also went to the funeral. It was in high school. Do you yeah. have any more what uplifting th- stories? <laughs> <laughs> um, should I go back to where my dad beat me? No, but what you're saying is going back to class was a, mm. a challenge. That's what you're no, saying. No, we're in high school, so I think we're all pretty self revolved We probably made it all about ourselves. Wow. At least, at least it's not now. <laughs> Nowadays, people would just all make a bunch of TikToks and then be like, "This is what I'm doing to get through the pain." <laughs> and it's like, do you even know this person? <laughs> no, but my friend's friend. Right. Like, Catfishing, yeah. Thirty How, days to yeah. get over. <laughs> How's the word get out? You know what I mean? 
Right. That's a good point. Well, because at some point it's the parents that discover the body, uh, maybe yeah. a coroner, but how does it trickle down to the class? You know what I mean? That's so true. Kids can't keep secrets, I yeah. guess. All I right. cannot we keep have, a secret. We have the Britain uh, vid that we're talking about, which makes me laugh, although I haven't seen it. Mr. Britton, do you still have a security clearance? Are you going to plead guilty today? Did you steal any luggage today? <laughs> Aww. Um, who are you wearing? Uh, who are you wearing is good. <laughs> it's whose shit are you wearing? Yeah. It's not a designer. It's yeah. like, what was... lady did you steal that shit from? It's um, trolling. All right. I love it. Do you have that uh, KJP thing? Fucking drives me nuts. Everyone hates me. I get it. I don't. A very unpopular. Uh, I tweeted. Somebody tweeted to me like yesterday or something. You can find it. All right. Anyway, keep going. (laughs) All right. Well, um, let's do another story here. So there's a new study out that that says men who regularly lift heavy objects at work Mm -hmm. have higher sperm counts. Mm. That's right. So the researchers found that um, these men had 46% higher sperm concentration and 44% higher total sperm count compared to those with less physical jobs. My That's, sperm count is two. <laughs> the the, the toughest, heaviest thing I lift is a microphone. Yeah, yeah. The <laughs> toughest job is asking all the beefy yoked guys for jizz. You know what I mean? Like, hey, guy who can squat 900 pounds? Yeah. Oh, just hear me out. We're doing a test. Doing a study here. Oh, you want to know whether I like butter or margarine better? No. Mm. I need you to jack here's off for me. Yeah, here's a cup. I'll give you a tumbler because you seem <laughs> pretty virile. Um, yeah, look. L- listen, everybody. The more dude shit you do, the higher your sperm count. Uh, Dr. Drew told me a million years ago, men who get in, into a positions of power like i have higher testosterone and you know the more dude stuff you do the more dude stuff your body things and now we have all these fucking dudes wearing bracelets and wanting to go to follow the lilith fair and of course sperm count is fucking down of course we're we're turning into chicks that's that's what's going on because guys who worked at at logging camps and shit back in the day had to do dude stuff all day and we were biologically it affects you yeah can't fucking sit around and stream uh whatever netflix <laughs> bullshit you're watching and eat your grub hub and expect that your sperm count and testosterone's going to go up oh we have the uh the kjp vid that that so here's the whole thing everyone will will like this clip and they'll they'll agree with the clip but it's fucked up i've been yelling at you people for a long time this is not a way to run a business a country an airline or anything else what do you mean by you people everybody you (laughs) jews here we go i want to take the opportunity to to lay out uh, what how diverse the president's cabinet has been how diverse the president's administration has been Uh, the cabinet is majority people of color for the first time in history the cabinet is majority female for the first time in history a majority of white house senior staff identify as female 40 percent of white house senior staff identify as part of the racially diverse communities and a record seven assistants to the presidents are openly LGBTQ plus. So again, good. Are they good at their job? Are they good at their job? And the answer is not that good at their job. And we are in the fucking plane. These idiots are flying, but we've decided Mm. we're going to measure. We're not going to do eyesight or reflexes or history as far as flying a plane. We'll do it based on your ethnicity or whose cock you suck. And then we're wondering, like, why is everything not so good? You know because you is, can't Adam? hire people this way, you fucking idiots. This is the veggie sub argument, oh, right? Jesus. We just need a little bit of everything to yes. please everybody. Yes, good. Yeah. It's, it's so diverse. But <laughs> let's... It, 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 it's going to fuck everything up. Yeah. It, it is fucking everything up. It, everyone loves it. Everyone embraces it. Everyone's a fucking coward. No one wants to say a word about it. No one's called racist or homophobic or whatever. It will fuck up any business. It'll fuck up any country. You shall see. Mark the words. Everyone's scared to talk. We're starting <laughs> seeing little bits of it now. Yeah. But it is not. It, it all has to be done on fuck. It's a meritocracy. That's the beauty of this country. You have to fucking level the playing field and then 
will see who the best is on everything. This is why people secretly love sports. Because it's the last right. thing that's not artificially fucked up. It's pure. But you, and also very diverse. You taking Asian <laughs> kids diverse. on UCLA and throwing yeah. them off uh, the campus and replacing them with right. some group that's not that's doing crazy. as well does not do anything but fuck up both groups. I think at the end of the day, history continuously repeats itself because people only learn from their own mistakes. So we just have to keep watching the same stuff over and over again. Yes, so. but anyway, very proud. It would be nice Lots if of at lesbians the end of running that the sen- country. Yeah, it would be nice if at the end of that sentence, the word instead of diverse is, you know, our admi- everyone that works at our administration is, instead of diverse, qualified. Mm, that'd be a novelty. Or is experienced. Yeah. Or is brilliant. Now, we're all for diversity. You're not making the case against diversity. It's putting diversity above the meritocracy that you're talking I'm about. I'm not making the case for or against diversity. It's just like best if, man, if woman, it's they for the we job. All, uh, That's 108 million people just watched right. the Super Bowl and all the guys on the defensive, defensive side of the ball for Philly were black right. and all the buddy, all the people in my room right. were white right. cheering it on. <laughs> and if you, if you sprinkle it in a couple of Asians, a couple of Jews, and a couple of <laughs> Uh, a couple, couple of juice yeah. playing sports. A couple yeah, of really gingers luck. on yeah. the defensive side of the ball. I would not enjoy yeah. it as no, much. I would probably yes. ask, is that guy really better? Yes. That, is that cornerback, that Jewish cornerback, is he really? And it would fuck up the whole thing. We are, we, yeah. So There's no doubt. It could be diverse yes. or, or it doesn't have to be. It's just whoever's That's the, key. the best. It doesn't have I, to be. I wouldn't want to be hired just because I was a woman. I, that would piss me off me if I neither. found out I only got hired because oh. I have a vagina. That well, would annoy me. Then you got to leave now. Oh, I knew it. <laughs> during the pre-show meeting, we said we need a vagina <laughs> yeah. in here. There are, I don't think there's one Jewish football player, by the way. You know, we had the Sandy Koufax for the for the baseball, but the, like, oh my God! Whenever I'm playing football, it's it's the opposite of everyone else's like motive for the game. It's always like avoid the ball at all costs. <laughs> Julian Edelman may have been. Oh yeah, Jewish. correct. He's the one. Yeah, I know. Sad that He's I a had great to point guy. That out I'm sorry, you. you have to point that On out. On Adam's nose tackle, Feral Cats. Oh yeah, the big <laughs> oh, <wow>. stopping <laughs> nose tackle named Feral Cats. All I'm saying is. <laughs> <laughs> Nerf was invented for us. That's right. The Nerf, Nerf football was like, oh, it's soft, it's squishy, it doesn't have that trafe pig pigskin on it. You're All not right. Gonna, yeah. I don't even know what Nerf You're is. done with Nerf. Nerf, Nerf is squ- <laughs> Come on, Nerf is squishy football. Do it as Casey Kasem. Uh, Be outraged. Hello, I'm Casey Kasem. <laughs> and Nerf football... You really don't know First what it dog. is. Football's She's only from popular Russia. in America. Okay, fine. Football's not a thing in other countries. She's only 34. Have you heard of a Nerf soccer ball? No. All right. Well, that doesn't help the argument. No. No, nothing Nerf. <laughs> do they have a Nerf soccer ball? They must. They, they must, yeah. All right. Let's do one more because Aaron uh, Kerman is out there waiting. All right. Sure thing. So Adam Levine. Oh. There There's a Nerf soccer there ball. There he is. So, it's soft. You don't hurt mm. yourself. Adam Levine is uh, going to court with a car dealer uh, because he, um, the car dealer sold him an extremely rare car that, and Adam claims he's been swindled. It's a, uh, there. so this guy's named Rick Cole, the car dealer, and Adam claims they did a vehicle swap back in 2021, giving Cole a 1968 and 1972 Ferrari that were valued at 950k combined. What were those two cars, Ben? You gotta look it up now. Probably a Dino. The mm. 72. I'm gonna go with a Dino. But all right, yeah. keep going. 4A. And in return, Adam Levine got a 100,000 dollar 19 or got 100,000 dollars and a 1971 Maserati Ghibli. 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 <laughs> 4.9 liter spider. That's a Ben Affleck movie you're naming. <laughs> <laughs> it's not very good. Either. All right. Now, so here's the, here's the deal. 4.9 liter? Yeah. Okay. I don't know that much about Maseratis, but I do know every fucking thing about cars. A Ghibli, they would have made a lot of them. Uh, 365 GTC. All right. 72 and 68. I know. Well, fair enough. Right. All right. The Ghibli. Ghibli, they made a 4.7, a 4.9. They made a bunch of coupes, like hard tops, and they make a small number of convertibles, right? And so when you take a car and um, the the hard top version of a Ferrari Daytona is 550 grand, but if you have a convertible, it's probably 1.3. So 
there's so few of them. Now, some people bought hard tops and made them into convertibles, and you can't tell, but the serial number would let you know. So, and that would right. cost what to, to convert it into a convertible? You know, a, but twenty five thousand dollars. Way better than spending the one point. But the real car, yeah. But you now hurt point. the value. Now it's worth probably less than the hard top because you cut the top off and it's not a real convertible it's for value. collectors. Yeah. Okay. So a Ghibli is you know two hundred thousand dollars. You know one seventy five to two fifty or something. But a Ghibli convertible, he called it a Spider, right? Yep. That's a convertible. That's a million dollars. Only 25 made. So what is not clear in this TMZ story, because I read it and they don't fucking know anything <laughs> about cars, is I'm assuming this was a Ghibli that they made, you know, 500 of. Somebody whacked the top off it. They called it a Spider, one of 25, which would make it worth a million dollars, but it wasn't actually serial numbers matching Spider, yeah. but to make it more confusing, the picture that they showed, I couldn't tell <laughs> if it was a convertible or not. Right? I couldn't tell either. I've, but got, a, I've got a new idea for a series: Adam Carolla, car detective. Mm -hmm. The way he just unspooled that crime. Yes, the, yeah. that was fascinating. The way you just did that. <laughs> well, uh, it's the only thing that can make sense. Yeah. It, 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 but I, I still haven't seen a picture. Ben, maybe can find a picture. I couldn't. Tell, but there is no such thing as a Ghibli hardtop. We're that's at worth the end of the story. Dollars. It's okay to show pictures. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Look, Daddy Wheels. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, Adam so, Levine's looking yeah. at is seeking more than eight hundred fifty thousand dollars in damages. Right, because mm. a a coupe Ghibli is two hundred thousand dollars. A convertible is a million, and he was sold a coupe as a convertible, and that's where that eight hundred grand would come Why in. Why didn't that, he that's look up the serial number or just do his research if he was going to spend all that money? He's so busy hiking with his shirt off yeah. <laughs> that he just couldn't carve he's out so any time. He's so busy DMing so many yeah. different women. Yeah. 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 Yes. Yes, Got he's it. so busy <laughs> pretending he doesn't know he's hot <laughs> that he didn't have time to get into the serial numbers. Yeah. Do you think mm -hmm. he's going to get it? He's going to win? Well, he also, he, he probably trusts this guy, and the guy presented this thing as a... Yeah, this is guy, a factory convertible from nineteen, you know, seventy one, and it was made into a convertible in Florida in nineteen eighty five. This guy's that's made, the only logical story. Yeah, he's made deals with Steve McQueen before, Robin Williams, Frank Sinatra, right. and Johnny and, Carson, and they're all oh. dead. And they're all dead. <laughs> they're all dead. Look, there's a pattern here. All right, that's, is there yeah, a picture don't buy a car of off this guy? Oh, oh, it is convertible. Oh, that, yeah, that, that all right. looks like a convertible. Right. So this mm -hmm. enhance. This Ghibli would be worth a million dollars if it was an authentic convertible. Wow. But Could you made. tell looking at it? No. Maybe the it, seller didn't know. It's possible no. that that was a hard top that they converted. Let me write this nice down. Alon. Write that down. <laughs> that's not, that's no, 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 no. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> yes, that's uh, not what I've been saying for 20 time. minutes. No, no, no. <laughs> but, but, but can you tell if that's an actual answer convertible? Answer no. Oh, the answer is no. You would have to check the serial number. Because people okay. are really good now, right? Like, they, they can, they can make it look like Listen, the real thing. Listen, in 1963, they could have done yeah, it well, and made it look the exhibit same. Exhibit could have done this, yeah. Yeah, Exhibit could have pulled this but, one but off. But the fact that no one can tell with the naked eye means there's going to be a lot of this stuff going on. Yeah, but people are still, selling it. Usually, if you're spending, but I guess what do you expect from this guy? I mean, he didn't even think twice to have women sign NDAs when he was DMing them all that shit. Right. So I guess yeah. he didn't do any right. research in that car either. <laughs> well, that's you, right. <laughs> as a businessman, mm. wouldn't you buy a bunch of those cars, knock off the the roofs, and make them look like convertibles? And then yeah. they're doesn't as that a make Jew, like a, I would. I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> doesn't that make? Isn't that sound business? Well, the problem is, is there's 25 <laughs> in the world. Okay. So and you're selling a three of them have been destroyed right. over the years. Right. So now there's 22 in the world, okay. but all of a sudden there's 29 in the world. <laughs> sure. And the guys who know these cars, okay. they not only know, they know where they are. They'll, they know oh, yeah. who owns those and the collector the collections they're in and stuff well, like that so if you just hands will know you just roll in a new one with a fresh set of paint <laughs> the, hey the stand-up comedian out of uh, the glendale area has got his hands on an actual <laughs> convertible people <laughs> people are going to raise an eyebrow and they're going to want to look at serial numbers like right two cars worth about like 950 and he paid together. that price yeah 
Yeah, traded, he did he uh, his cars. Show me a picture. Look, he of a married three, a Victoria's Secret model. model. He's like he's everything. Okay. I deserve yeah. it all. So he's like, I don't need to check. I know I got, I got a good deal. So just all right, him. we're gonna talk uh, some real real estate in our next segment. Perfect. Segment and uh, Aaron, who's coming in here, is said to have had sold ten billion in real estate. Is that oh. right? Yeah. Nikki but that's Minaj, just Johnny Carson's old Rihanna. place. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it's, this is a 365 Daytona? Oh, he, he did two Daytonas? That's the car I said they made into a convertible as well. Wow. Thanks for, thanks for stifling your outburst, Elon. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, my picture. God. <laughs> Something shiny popped up on the screen and he didn't react. Yeah. He, all right. So he traded in two $500,000 cars for $1 million car that was worth $200,000 cars because dollars because someone took a sawzall to Yes. It. Okay. All right. Now we can all sleep, but why is that not explained in the article? Because they're not car guys, I think. <laughs> hey, Ben, just for fun. I bet Aaron but a, it was, was it a was, car guy. But it was a car plus 100K. Oh, okay. But. I bet. If you look up the price of a Ghibli convertible, it'll be 900 to a million bucks or somewhere in there. All right, quick break. Aaron Kerman, who's a realtor extraordinaire, is going to be in here right after this. It's time to check Adam's voicemail. Ace man, I'm having a crisis here, brother. My mother-in-law just referred to my dog as her grand dog. God, I'm so fucked. Get it on. You can leave us a message at 888-634-1744. Aaron Kerman is in studio. Um, he does real estate big time. Grew up in Encino, Valley guy. Yeah. I grew up in North Hollywood. Both Valley guys. Yeah, so North Hollywood is to Encino what Van Nuys is to Sherman Oaks. It's like kind of nearby, but nowhere near is good. You'd be much better off in Encino than you would be in uh, North Hollywood. Um, well, I guess we're talking about Johnny Carson. What was the house? Where are you working? Do you do the Malibu? You do North? You do Beverly Hills? What I do, do you all do? over. I do anything expensive. So we we specialize in the uh, uber expensive house. What's the most expensive house you've sold? Uh, I sold one three hundred million dollar one in the south of France, and we sold one this year or last year. Wait, for, what's a commission on that? The three hundred million? I never do my commission until I get the check. Uh, That's what rich people would say. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually pretty true. It's uh, like 2%, right? That's 2%, yeah. Which is, what is it, $1.5 million? Uh, $300 million. Oh, No, it's 20. It's, it's more than that. It's, oh, wait. It's, oh, wait. it's three, three. Wait, $300 million, It's It's $6 million. And then uh, last year, we did a house for $141 million. So we do a lot of the very big, very expensive properties. Is this a generally true statement where people go like, oh, why would you buy a $100 million house? Because you'll sell it for one thirty-five in right. seven years in, in L.A. Is that, is that Listen, seem about right? It's kind of about right. People are buying it because they want to have that lifestyle and they they probably have a lot of money that they need to spend. I have an important question that my wife and I always argue about. How off is Zillow? Because every time I go, look, honey, our house is where you're an idiot. Zillow knows nothing. Yeah. Aren't they like within 200 grand off, let's just say? It really depends on the neighborhood. Pick a um, percentage versus right, 200 fine. grand. Sorry, sorry. 200 grand on a hundred million dollar house no, is right. pretty I'm accurate like two, on your house. Dollars. Yeah, it's my not shit. Exactly. Listen, yeah. Zillow is right when you're talking neighborhoods that are very consistent. It's a mathematical equation. When you're dealing with luxury, Zillow can be very, very off. I remember reading the Zillow. The own, literally, the person that started Zillow, his house was like 2.5 million off what this estimate was. Oh, wow. So, you know, when you're doing dealing with Zestimate. luxury and, and, Zestimate. and different Zestimate, yes. correct. They the, thought uh, of that. They okay, had a meeting I, about that. How uh, about Zestimate? I, oh, Where's I, Zillow? <laughs> I, it's been, a, it's been a minute since I've been angry, but uh -oh. you want to know who's off. Uh-oh, here we go. I'll, Casey. I'll tell you who's way He's the He's not on the phone. The way the fuck off. Go ahead. The bank appraiser. The person yeah. who's yeah. dispatched to, I had Way a person, off. especially if you want a loan for something else. It's not you're selling your house, but you just go, I want to get a loan, come appraise my house. 
I had a guy, I had a house at Lake Hollywood, blah, 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 at the time. I don't know, maybe more three million bucks. The guy like came in and said like one, two. You know, I was like, you're way, you're way off. And he's like, yeah, I don't work this area. And I'm like, uh. well, okay, well, find me the guy who works. He was a beat. diversity hire. They're, they're usually 30 to 45% right. low. Right. And then people go, why? And they go, that's the bank just protecting themselves. And I'm like, well, why are we doing this then? Yeah. You live in a $3 How million dollar protect- house. He says it's one, two. What are we doing and welcome, here? And welcome to the biggest headache of our world. Because we put houses in escrow. They're right. priced right. They sell right. There's buyers. And then the bank comes in and, and does a 40% less price point and we're like oh that's the bank is going the house you just sold for two five is only worth one eight and it's like mm-hmm. yeah but we have an o- we have an offer for two five and they're like yeah but it's not worth that it's like well it's worth what we're being offered yeah. right well we always say it's worth what somebody's willing to pay for it yes. like a house is worth what somebody's willing to pay Ugh. for it day in and day out you people with your banks oh <laughs> You know we don't control the banks. We could barely control our bowels, <laughs> folks. <laughs> right, but where? So where's this going? Because the con- they, they're raising interest yeah. rates. People are worried about the economy. A lot of people are like, "Oh, real estate's going off a cliff." Yeah. And it's like, "Yeah, but never for this group. Uh, oh, but that group, and you know, lower price stuff or whatever." But where? Where's this heading? Sort yeah. of. For the luxury stuff, and then where's it heading just sort of nationally? Yeah, I think uh, I think the market was definitely frozen last year. We kind of had a freeze. Everybody took a step back and said, wait, we need to kind of evaluate where we're going. There's this pending recession, stock market volatility. All of these things have led to a difficult market, interest rates going up exponentially. Uh, I think at this point, buyers are beginning to come back. They're moving forward, and they're saying, hey, it is what it is. Uh, we're seeing a lot of movement in the market. Uh, interest rates are very high, which has slowed down the market. Price points have begun to drop, but we still see very low inventory. So it is a very bizarre market that nobody really knows how to predict at this very moment in time. What is, uh, we're talking about Johnny Carson's house in the colonies. Malibu, yeah. yeah. That he bought for, I guess, 9.5 and 05, and then state sold for like, I don't know, 48 and 15 or something. What is the story with that? Do but you know look, you know, and what's the average colony house? Oh, the average colony house is like 25 to 35 million. But you know, when you're talking about the Uber high end, the, the all cash buyers, anything between 30 and 150 million, that market is pretty unaffected because those people are not relying on interest rates. Those people are usually all cash and they want what they want, what they want. And that's, you know, you know, the wealthy, uh, tend to invest a lot of money in real estate. So What's considered a high interest rate? Uh, right now, they're at like 6%, Ooh, 6.5. That's bad. Literally, last year, beginning of last year, they were at 2.3 wow. to 3 max. So that is double within like a nine-month period, and that has been a very different, difficult challenge for the market. Well, we have a very diverse cabinet, mm-hmm. so that's the important part. You know what you have to do with all the fucking dumb people in your life? You have to show, you have to go, they just go, I hate Republicans, I hate Trump, I whatever, go, okay, when Trump was in office, it was like 2-2. So if you bought a $1 million house, two point two. this would be your yeah. monthly payment. It's now 6-6. Six, six. This is your monthly payment. And they go, oh, fuck. Yeah. It's an extra $3,000 a Donald. month. Yeah. And you're like, oh. You know, we kept interest <laughs> rates very low, and we did very well, and nobody said anything. You know, the fake news, they're not going to report that. And then little Joe Biden, what, what's his nickname for Joe? Sleepy Joe. He comes in, and he's... You know, the guys in a coma, I think he died like 12 years ago and nobody told him. And now they look at the interest rates and we're not doing well. We're not. And the billionaires are the problem. They are ruining the California coastline because they buy these houses and <laughs> they are, there should not be a house on a coast. And now, now I'm doing Jackie Mason. This is what those is makes me nauseous. The Cri- thing. Yes, Bernie oh, Sanders. I was trying to do Bernie Sanders. Violet He's always against Jackie Mason. Who does? We were talking Violet. Jackie Mason, yeah. uh, Larry Storch. <laughs> we were talking about all the fucking. This pr- makes me nauseous to think that a person such as Violet doesn't know the person that I am. I'm one of the biggest people. You don't know Jackie Mason? He's no, the most I'm famous Jewish comedian ever. But anyway, Bernie Sanders says the billionaire. 
billionaires are ruling everything. Why does Bernie hate billionaires? Is, is it because he's one of the few Jews that didn't make any money? Most of us are poor. <laughs> My parents, for example. You know, I grew up in the Bronx. I hate when people say Jews have all the money. I'm like, mm. really? I had a Plymouth. My father drove a Plymouth. They were teachers. I grew up in the Bronx. Where is the money? Where are the meetings? Where? How come I? Did you grow up I with money? I thought the same thing. When they said the Jews gather around, I was like, that is so messed up. Because no one's insane. been calling me. Yeah. I'm, where is I'm, the money? I'll take some. And I grew up poor. So I was just like, great. Another thing my dad failed me with. By the way, I grew, no up, I grew up poor as well. Mom, cool teacher. Dad was a trucker. Like wow. I didn't grow up in this world. Trucker Jew. That yeah. we've never yeah. seen yeah. before. I've never yeah. seen that. <laughs> yeah. So it's, it's an interesting world that I'm in now. And it's very oh, different. Oh, you're Jewish? I am. Of course you yeah. are. Yeah. Well, hey, by the way, handsome too. <laughs> oh, stop. Are you so married? Sweet. I am married, actually. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> Gay on. Uh, ben, you know what you can look up just to... This, uh, on a million dollar house with twenty uh, percent down, that's pretty standard now, yeah. right? Yeah. On a million dollar house, which doesn't get you much out here, but I'll just say for people listening nationwide, on a million dollar house, twenty percent down, your monthly payment between the current rate at six six or mm -hmm. something like that, and the old rate with the guy everyone hated, it like. Two two or two yeah. three or it's a matter of five six thousand a month for two three thousand versus two three thousand a month. It's it's significant. Yeah, it's hugely significant. Yeah. I mean it's hugely significant. Imagine which is why. two thousand a month. And by like, the way, that all happened in like such a short period of time, which is obviously why our markets are in flux, and we're seeing a uh, downward trajectory. But Adam, you're not crediting the entirety of, of interest rates being low on Trump. You're not giving him that. No. I mean, he was I'm, good for the economy. We can't, you know, that's not an I, argument. I'm just but saying. that's not his doing. Uh, I'm saying in general, we take our politicians, right. and this is a brand new thing, and we've decided, first off, we, do, we did a... I'd like to get a beer with that guy. You're never getting a beer with that guy. You're not <laughs> getting a beer all. with Obama. You're not getting a beer with Trump. You're not getting a beer with Biden. You, right. You're not getting a beer with anyone. So just, I know you like that guy because he'd be a cool guy to have a beer with, but you're not going to get the beer. What is going to affect you are other policy things. Can you that buy this person, a beer? Can you afford yeah. a beer? Yeah. And so many people I know are like, I hate Trump. Or I hate that guy or fuck that guy. And it's like, good, fuck him. Let's talk policy because that's going to end up affecting you more. There were no than, wars than than the beer. There were no wars. And the economy the was rate better. Interest rate. Low, it was yeah. just more business right. oriented and a little right. little less kumbaya pie in the sky. Right. But you have a bunch of stuff. You have inflation. You have yes. the stock market volatility, which has been crazy the past couple of weeks, right. a couple of months. On top of that, you have interest rates, and on top of that, you have impending "quote unquote" recession that everyone's waiting for. They've so been talking about that right. for a year now, and I don't see a recession. Oh, it's I, it's on. It's it's happening. Okay, but also everything's I hope cyclical. You're right, by the way, I no, hope you're right. Too. I hope but you're right. everything's cyclical. So yeah, if it's six, seven, it's just going to go right back. We down. we like uh, after the pandemic ruined the society. We didn't have to shut everything down. No, we did not. The you guys shut everything Who's down. You, you fucking no. idiots. Yeah, the government. The did. government yeah, did it. It yeah. wasn't the pandemic. Right. You closed all the businesses and all the schools, and you did the damage. We didn't have to do that. So stop blaming the pandemic. It's your reaction to it, and of course we're going to fuck up our society if we shut everything down, tell everyone to stay home, and then start handing out money. But if you look at, like, for example, Miami, Miami did not necessarily shut down. People fled to Miami during fled. that. I mean, fled to you know Miami during the pandemic, and now we see Miami real estate is slowing, mm -hmm. but Thank it is God. the epicenter of being, it's still on fire. People on are- fire. On fire. It's They're impossible moving yeah. to get I a place under 10 million. I went to Miami trying to buy a property, and it was just- Things that usually were one million, they were just trying to sell it for two million. It was such BS. We're more like I, eight or I, nine. I want to. I, I, you know, being in real estate, I considered buying a property three years ago in Miami. Oh, I could absolutely kill myself for not kill, doing it. Just the kill property yourself. that I wanted to buy, three, four million dollars. Yes. Today, twenty. Ten. To fifteen. Okay. Wow. Wow. Sorry. No, sorry. I'm sorry. 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 Twenty. Much, but, but, but no, but that's a giant Jewish mistake. <laughs> Not buying real estate at the right time, like Miami. But who would have thought Miami was like, like Boca was the, the joke of the, oh, the old Jews. Of Boca. It is the youngest, hottest, hippest yeah. spot. And it's impossible to get a house for under what? Two, three million there? And now it's insane. Yeah. Now it's insane. But pre-pandemic, it was like the best price secret. Right. Oh, and I actually blame the pandemic for that because people went there in droves. I blame the Jews. Yeah. 
Mm. So a uh, at two point five with your twenty percent down on a million dollar house, it's uh, four thousand six hundred bucks. Uh, at seven percent, which we're heading toward, it's sixty eight hundred bucks. So if you're buying a house, that's that's a that's a pretty big monthly yeah. jump. It's just all all interest. I don't know. You think we'll get to seven? So with that, the wait. When can you refinance a house? How does that work? After I mean, you, you, buy could, a house? You, could all, you could always refinance if if you have enough equity in the house and uh, it makes sense. Refinancing is, is certainly possible. But when I bought my house, I made a mistake and I I put only fifteen percent down, so I got on a baby loan, and I wasn't I wasn't fully aware of everything that was happening because I took it as I was an idiot. I would say. I just like I'll figure it out as I go. That's just how I go on with my life. Yeah. So I I was first having to pay ten thousand dollars a month for Oof. my house, Oof. and then Oof. I refinanced it towards the end of uh, when did the pandemic start? Twenty twenty. Mm-hmm. So towards the end of two thousand nineteen, I refinanced my house and I said, finally, you know what? Twenty twenty is going to be my year, and then it wasn't. Uh, but can I say something? <laughs> but but don't be so hard on yourself because you bought a house. You got in the game. That's right. And you did it. And by the way, you should be really proud of yourself because uh, long term, you. I mean, long term, real estate's a great investment. Mm-hmm. A lot of people sit on the sidelines and don't, and, and listen, markets come up, markets go down, equity comes up, equity goes down. Bottom line is you're in it and you're part of the movement. And if you didn't do that, long term, you would lose. So yeah. I think and you did right. And the, by the way, a lot of people, yeah. you know, look, people look at my numbers, people look at my sales. I'm the son of a trucker. Like, I know what it's like. And I always tell people, get in the game. As long as you're in the game, you're winning. And, you know, they have loans for, 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 for first-time buyers at 5%. Oh, they do? Mm-hmm. They, 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 they do. And people should still take those because eventually markets will be up again. And listen, when markets are difficult... Mm-hmm. It's a great time to get a good deal. And no, I always tell yeah. people that. I'm very lucky that I was able to afford a home, especially because my parents weren't able to buy a home in America. So it's cool as an immigrant to buy a home. It was always my dream to buy one in 30. And the coolest thing that really just shows now, just engraves me being an LA native. And is that the fact that just like the rest of the people in California, Someone tried to break into my house in December. So really? super Ugh. cool. I didn't I didn't know this until a couple of days ago. One of my neighbors, uh, I ran into one of my neighbors that's redoing two of the houses in front of me, and we all hate them, but we're trying to be nice to them because they're just ruining our neighborhood. And basically he just goes, So do you know about those guys that do you know about, you know, someone tried to break into your house a couple of months ago? And I was like, Yeah, right. And he goes, yeah, it shows on our cameras. I, I, I didn't know if you knew. I'm like, what? And it was a specific day where my cameras were off on the outside of my house. And he shows me. And it was four big men went to my house, going around my house, trying to find an entrance. And I live in the hills. They're trying to find an entrance. And then they, I guess they were looking through my garage and they saw a car. So that's why they, they I think that's why they decided not to break into my house. But that that definitely for, uh, well, scary. Now well, I'm changing. By the way, this sounds this sounds like some Jeffrey Epstein shit. The cameras were off. The garage was closed. That's I'm right. not. I don't know if this the was guard a real, fell asleep. The guards fell asleep. Yeah. Can I just say you were home I'm so during glad this? You, yeah. No, oh, I'm wow. so glad oh, you, you were weren't home? hurt. I was yeah. home. Oh, thank God. I, I, thank God you're. Wow, Baruch I Hashem. know. I well, I lucky. mean, I, yeah. knowing Thank with God. my luck, I have a gun in my house, and with my you luck, what? it would be used against me. Uh-huh. That's yeah. just how dumb I am. I don't yeah. know how much that has it to do with luck. To I think there's some skill. <laughs> there's a skill involved in that. No, that. somehow I'd be like, I have a gun, and then I'd be like, where is it? And one of the guys would have it, and I'd be like, great. At least, I just know that would happen to me. Uh, at least we, have a, we don't have a gun in our house. I don't even think I would know how to use it. I so. have a butt plug in my house. <laughs> now, obviously, I, with my luck, you know, yeah, I'd be running with it down the hallway. I would slip. You know where it would end up. Yeah, that's the luck I have. Yeah. People with butt plugs in their homes are more likely. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I loved your advice that you just gave, though, because even though interest rates are high, buy a house now when prices are low, because h- how much sense does that make? You're getting the low price of the house, and then in a few years, you refi anyway, get the low interest rates. You have the best there of both go. worlds. Aaron, Pe- people uh, always make the mistake of buying high and buying when everybody else is buying. And that's just everyone's psychology. It's herd mentality. Mm. I always tell people, when people are not buying, buy. And... You know, I represent- buy in a seller's market. <laughs> I just, you know, what I tell everyone, what? I just go, 
as soon as you can buy a house. Yeah. They go, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Well, I got to check the market. Yeah. Where are we at? You yeah. think it's a good time? And I'm like, the, here's the time when you can do it. Could do it as soon as you, you can do it. I would say the same applies, I'm not kidding, to having kids. Mm-hmm. But men, several men, especially like me, will still procrastinate and avoid both of those things. I'm not ready. I'm not stable financially yet to have kids to buy a house. The truth is, it's a lot of our wives pushing us. No, 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 we're buying a house. No, no, no we're having kids now. I don't. I do think I'd be a homeless, fatherless person if, if it was all up to me. <laughs> yeah. I still, at 52, I have four kids. What? But it was my wife that pushed me to buy the house. And I was like, we can't afford a house yet. And pushed me to have, we were married at 23 and have kids till 30. Seven years, I was like, I got to get my, get my career going. I can't have kids. So yeah, it's a lot of fear. But you're right, what you just said too. Just buy it even before you think you can. Like just before. Well, and, and by the way, like it's not, just, it's, it's not just that. It's buy a house and the next minute when you have enough money, buy another one. Because that's what, what, yeah, what, what, yeah, what, what are you for the rich people. No, yeah. Yeah. Just I mean, like, just oh like, yeah, just you, buy a house. You just buy a house for and then you rent. Yeah, 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 just go buy a house. Yeah. 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 Where's the no money down? Let the real estate expert talk for a second. (laughs) What do you mean have houses? Listen, one of my biggest regrets in life was not buy more houses. And I could tell you, I I know a lot of not wealthy people (laughs) that have no joke. They don't make a lot of money. They are hardworking people. Salaries anywhere is between 30,000 and 150. And they own multiple properties because they were smart. They were diligent. They took advantage of the system. Wow. And today, those people are sitting pretty because they, they're they sitting on equity of properties. And I always tell people, you don't have to be rich to do it. Yeah. Like, By the way, the perfect example of it. that are my friends who, who, like, he's a doctor. He does okay. He's not wealthy. But he bought a house in Santa Fe. And right next to the house, just 10 feet away, is a cottage with its own kitchen, bath, whatever. They said, when we rent that out every month, that pays for our mortgage. Our house is free. That's the best thing to do is to have a, another house or an attachment to your house that you could rent. Renting is the greatest. I wish I rented to someone. I wish someone was paying me rent. It's literally the bane of my existence but now that I own no real estate. friend is fucked because... Why? Because Rust relocated to <laughs> <They're> <laughs> Yellowstone, back. and uh, that place is going to be empty because yeah, they had a crew, yeah. they had the but gun I, wrangler stay But there. I got it. Like for example, my husband grew up in. You're Alfonso. what? My husband. Grew You're up what? My husband. I knew you were flirting with me. <laughs> <laughs> he grew up in a favela in Venezuela. Yeah. No money. You know, super super poor family. Uh, but he worked at a bank in mm-hmm. his younger years, so he understood the value of mortgage, leverage, and everything else. Well, not making a lot of money, and this was before we met. He was a lot smarter than I was. Mm-hmm. He owned seven different properties, and I don't believe his income was ever more than God knows what it was, but it wasn't a rich person's salary, 50, 60,000, maybe even 40. He had the intention to say, I'm going to buy something in Orlando. This was before he even lived in the United States. Crazy. Bought something in Chile. Ended up owning multiple apartments. I think he owned four. And I looked at him, and and I, and he's helped me, actually, because I've always been a cash hoarder. Like, I like to hoard my cash. As one of the top agents, it was the biggest mistake I've ever met. Mm-hmm. And now, when we talk, his thing is like, when you have money, exactly what you said, buy something over and over. Even if it's not ideally what you want, even if it's a rental, no matter what it is, even if it's out of the city, because LA is quite expensive, Put that money to work for you rather than just having the cash in the bank. Did you, um, Elon, so he had seven properties? He had. When you met him? Married him for his money. I will, yeah. I will go gay above five <laughs> oh, properties. I will too. 100%. Is it five? You should, could be like three in a townhouse. Three, like, <laughs> like, three in a condo and I'm in. If I may meet a gent with more than five properties, yeah, I definitely fine. could. Could make that move. Well, I'll go. To, I'll go gay without any property. No, yeah, you, I agree. You got to go straight uh, at a certain. <laughs> with the right man, I might too. A certain number. <laughs> um, but here's the thing: I heard this rumor. Tell me it's true. Seven thousand dollar homes you can purchase in areas of Italy. That to me sounds like the perfect investment. Anyone that has seven thousand can buy property somewhere. Is that true? It is true, but there's a catch. They and by the way, you could buy property for zero, and they will literally give you. Property in certain towns in Italy for no cost. What? But here's the thing. No wonder Clooney has that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like yeah. Como. Yeah, go ahead. Here's the thing. 
Um, and, and really what you're doing is you are restoring a property. So you have to show that you have the time, energy, oh. and money to put into these amazing old cities and towns. Mm. And ultimately that can be very expensive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, and, and that's you're not a, physically there. And, and you kind of have to be physically there. Mm-hmm. So it's, it's, it's a good advertising ploy and it is true, but it's a little bit more detailed than that. No free lunches. Come on. Uh, let me give you a plug, by the way, the website, Aaron, and I'll spell it out. K I R M A N.com. People can go there. They want to buy, yeah, hundred and thirty million dollars. Uh, by the way, we don't around. just sell that; we sell everything. It's it's everything from five hundred thousand up to the most expensive houses, but it's everything. So go there and uh, get to know Aaron and his. Uh, Aaron work. should have a show. He's like so personable, he does good have looking, a show. charming. No, an on camera show. I had, I had, he had a show. show. I had yeah. one. You should get it was, it was a show. one season. It was a one season special. Like, I watched. We, we, it. we got one season in COVID hit. I watch so. oh. all real estate shows. You did should you have it? another no. show. Yes, I did. I love real estate. I watch really? all MMA shows and real estate shows are my two shows. See, but I, I'm, I I'm done with those uh, bitches selling Sunset because yeah. it used to be. We'd look at $100 million real estate. Now it's just Yentas fighting in an office <laughs> and throwing champagne bottles at each other. There's no more real estate. It's just bitches be fighting. Uh, it's the name of the show now because they figured out who was watching this show. And I mm-hmm. guess they figured out it wasn't, wasn't Listen, me. I, I saw the first episode and I was like, oh, this is not going to work. Boy, was I wrong. They're yes. all like, they're season 25 right now. Yeah. All right. Let me give some plugs out. Uh, Elon is, uh, you can watch his appearance <laughs> with James Gordon and you can watch that clip on uh, YouTube. Oh, and my new special is on YouTube. There you go. It's called Sets in the City because I did five sets in one night at the Comedy Cellar. Elon Gold's favorite people. You could look that up on YouTube. You'll enjoy Violet, it. Violet, uh, Almost Adulting is the name of her podcast. You can find that wherever you find finer podcasts, right? I like to put finer. It's part of my childhood. Also, and I'm coming out with a new musical, <clears throat> Pouring the Musical. I know I'm gonna lick it here. Okay. I did that again. (laughs) Uh, I'm going to be in Vegas at the Jimmy Kimmel's Club coming up March 9th and then Naples, Florida, March 24th, 25th, all over the place. So just go to adamcroll.com. And until next time, this is Adam for Elon and Violet and Aaron saying mahalo. Mahalo. 